Can I, can I make, can I make ready your attention? <laughs> Here before we get the open session started, we're going to begin this evening with some very special recognition. So I'll pass it off to Dr. McClay. Thank you, Dr. McClay, and thank you to the board. Um, I would like to ask uh, Haley Fu and her family and her administrator, Cheryl, to go ahead and step forward. And while they uh, take a moment to get up here, um, before you think there's a glitch in the matrix or you're experiencing deja vu, you know, we have honored this young lady before. We have honored her for her spelling bee abilities, not only last year for winning the district and winning third place in the county, but just about a little over a month ago, Haley was first place in our TVUSD District B, and then she went on to represent us in the RCOE County B, and we are excited to announce that she is the fourth place winner in the entire county of Riverside. So on behalf of the Riverside County Office of Education, we'd like to award you with this certificate and this pin. And it was so big it needed its own seat. Oh, wow. <laughs> this trophy. Yeah. <laughs> you got it? Thank you. Two more years, two more years. Yeah. How about now? Oh, much better. Thank you. All right, next up this evening, we have another teacher extraordinaire. Mrs. Riley is going to come up to the podium, I believe, and lead off our recognitions for the Community Advisory Committee. So will you first tell us just a little bit about it, Mrs. Riley, before we give the awards? Sure. With us as well Beautiful. I didn't realize she was presenting too. So, so both she teacher is, extraordinaires. I'm giving, I'm giving an award. <laughs> Mrs. <Riley is> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so on behalf of the CAC, the Community Advisory Committee, um, this is one of our favorite times of the year because we get to present um, awards to all of our students from um, preschool all the way through our adult program with a Character Counts Award. And so we're just very gracious to be able to have them all here tonight with us to do that. So, um, and the CAC just works hard to support the district in all um, ways of helping to support parents and students in addition to teachers across the district. So if I could invite the rest of the group up, um, we have lots of people I'm gonna, just taking a turn yeah, presenting. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do Lacey first. Yep, come on Lacey. Hi, Lacey.
So we're going to bring her up too so she can get to the stage. Lacey has progressed immensely over the past year. Lacey is a leader with a kind heart. Lacey reaches out to students that require assistance. For example, Lacey offers hand-over-hand -hand assistance to a classmate that is not understanding where to put their stick in front of her. Lacey will hold doors open for classmates and provide comfort to friends who are in need of emotional support. Lacey went up to a friend that was sad to hold her hand, give them a hug, and provide words of comfort. Her character, confidence, and positive attitude shines brightly in our classroom all week long. We are so proud of you, Lacey. And I've got lots of good stuff for you, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> and should I face a certain way? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So next, we're going to present our award to third grader Cameron Rawson from French Valley Elementary School. Come on up, buddy. Okay. okay. And thank you for providing such a good example, Miss Cubitz. <laughs> okay. So Cameron, this is from I believe your teacher. And it says, Cameron has taken steps towards becoming a leader. He is known to advocate for others when he sees a need. He has helped diffuse situations between other students and appropriately sought out the help of staff. Cameron deserves to be recognized for his innate ability to help others so as to encourage this leadership quality so that it will continue over the years to come. Natural born leaders need to be embraced and encouraged across all contexts. Good job, Cameron. You wanna come up for a picture? And then mom, if you wanna come up, you can get the plaque out and take a picture. Thanks for being such a leader. Yeah. And this is for you. Congratulations. Cameron. Uh, next we have uh, Stetson Har and middle school. Come on up, Stetson. First of all, Stetson, here's your certificate. A little different between elementary and middle school, isn't there? <laughs> uh, so Stetson's teacher states <clears throat> that he is a wonderful type of student who helps others open up through his confidence and willingness to engage with students and collaborate, even when the expectations are high and the assignments may be difficult. 
He is a fearless communicator, a kind peer to everyone, and can always be counted on to set the tone for the class as he thoughtfully and honestly gives 100% of his best effort every day. That's not easy sometimes. Stetson's A in language arts is not, only, is not easily achieved, but through his diligence and dedication to be the best student he can be, he shows others the way and is, mire, is admired in our classroom. Congratulations, Stetson. Welcome. Now hold up your plaque. So there you go. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. This is all yours. Thank you. You're next. I'm next. Um, unfortunately, I don't think our high schooler made it. Is Amy in the crowd? My guess is she's out playing softball because she is on the Chaparral Varsity um, softball team. So I don't know if they're out playing a game or um, not. But our high schooler is Amy Narano. Um, she is a very motivated young lady. She has persevered through high school and overcome many different challenges. Um, and is looking forward to her graduating um, this coming year. And she's worked very, very hard, and her teachers are all very proud of her. So I will make sure she gets hers um, this week, since she wasn't able to be here tonight. And lastly, we have our um, ATP student, Miss Sarah. And luckily, we have her, her teacher, Mr. Wilson, who will be sharing about Sarah tonight. Maybe she'd rather have me introduce her. Yeah. My yeah. <laughs> ears. I know Mr. Wilson. Uh, he likes to teach you. Wow. Um, thank you, CAC, for putting this together. Thank you, board, for uh, honoring these students. And uh, we're talking adults here. We've come from all the young little ones all the way up to our adults here. And Sarah has been with our adult program. I'm going to read uh, what I wrote because I'll probably forget everything that you've accomplished. And so Sarah's in the embodiment of achievement here in our ATP program. She knew in high school that she wanted to work with children and started training in BASES program through the workability. Uh, when she started ATP, which is our adult program Monday through Friday, but she would come some days to ATP, but she was also uh, busy volunteering at an elementary school. And then she started college classes at MSGC, continued to work at a school, and attended ATP all at the same time. Talk about a busy schedule, right? Uh, her college career continued in earnest while she kept pace with difficult classes in child development. And then she earned her certificate in instructional assistant this past December. We couldn't be prouder. <laughs> <laughs> During her time in ATP, Sarah has been regularly hired by Ice America in the Old Town Ice Rink. She recently got a job at the Storm Stadium in the concessions area. And I even gave her the reason, you don't have to come every day to ATP because she's working late at night. She comes all the time. Way to go. When the team is playing home games, she can work six nights in a row, and she's still here at ATP. I've never had a student that has uh, had such a great attitude, willingness to learn, and a drive that never ends. Sarah's a great nominee for the uh, CAC Connections Award. Congratulations, Sarah. <laughs> This is probably my favorite night of the entire year is to watch this and Ms. Lash and I are sitting here with a box of Kleenex between the two of us because this, this moment for us is just so moving to watch um, the teachers and um, even, even some of our clerical staff who have been part of this entire process and teachers in, in celebrating our students. I thank you all and congratulations to these amazing students. It was really phenomenal to hear your stories. Um, so thank you all very much.
And for, our, and for our final recognitions tonight, we have Mr. Chris Dixon, who's going to recognize some of our amazing instructional coaches. Good evening, thank you. I am excited to represent the ESS directors as we re uh, 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 honor our instructional coaches. We have eight of them and we'd like to invite them up. Michelle Loza, Dr. Malone, Mary Butes, Nicole Simmons, Allison Clark, Ro Jaimes, Corey Gallegos, and Michelle Nelson. So these eight represent an incredible workforce for our district um, and talent. They, took, they left the classroom to become instructional coaches this year. And when we started the first day of school, we had 600 students in quarantine. And they had to renegotiate what their roles were throughout, all the way to January, where they continued to support students who were at home learning, support teachers who were out due to COVID, and did everything and anything to support ESS in our district. It is well overdue that we honor them today, and I'm so glad we got to this year because they have just been the heart and soul of ESS this year, and the four directors cannot thank them enough for their talent and their work ethic. In the journey, they not only did those jobs, they came up with their own ideas <laughs> and initiated, we need new teacher supports. They've worked with HR to welcome substitutes. They are doing everything to turn this district into a well-trained professional organization. So we want to honor all of them. Thank you. And your certificates will be coming tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, we have your certificates. <laughs> that wasn't my text. <laughs> uh, we'll hit a winery next week. But <laughs> okay. Rosalinda Jaimez, representing elementary. Allison Clark representing elementary. <laughs> Michelle Loza, representing ELA, secondary. <laughs> Michelle Nelson, representing elementary. I will tell you, you know, I used to do the God of Minutes, and when they came, I'm like, tag, you're it. And they, uh, it's, Michelle leads the group uh, for elementary and creating new videos. They're no longer a minute, <laughs> they're five. But teachers, we encourage you to watch them because they are so valuable. Representing secondary science, Nicole Simmons. Representing secondary math, Dr. William Malone. Representing Secondary Social Sciences, Mary Butes. And last but not least, representing Elementary, Corey Gallegos. And again, I, I agree uh, with Ms. Velez, the, the, seeing the students was amazing. But instructional leadership is key in order for these students to have success and to represent all of our teachers in this district and continue to support them. We just want to thank them and honor them again. So you can see why this is our favorite time of the meeting. Uh, we are going to take a five minute break. If you'd like to come up and take pictures, yeah. recognize and celebrate any of those honored this evening and then the board will convene in about five minutes with the regular business. <laughs>
Okay, you ready? Good evening and welcome to the regular open session meeting of the Temecula Valley Unified School District of Education on May 10th, 2022. Call the meeting to order at 6.13 p.m. The board has been in closed session since 4 p.m. and we also just concluded all our recognitions. Uh, in attendance, we have the governing board, myself, Adam Skumovitz, president, uh, Barbara Broche, clerk, Ms. Sandy Hinkson, Mr. Steven Schwartz, who is joining us via Zoom, and Mrs. Allison Barclay. We also have secretary to the board, Dr. Jody McClay, superintendent, Mrs. Nicole Lash, assistant superintendent, business support services, Dr. Karen Valdez, assistant superintendent, educational support services, Mr. Frank Arce is absent this evening. We also have Mrs. Kimberly Velez, Assistant Superintendent, Student Support Services, and Mrs. Lene Anasibar, Executive Assistant to the Superintendent. Please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. At approximately 9.30 p.m., the governing board will determine which of the remaining agenda items can be considered and act acted upon prior to 10 p.m. and may continue all other items on which additional time is required until a future meeting. All meetings are scheduled to end at 10 p.m. We'll now read out the action that was taken in closed session. It was moved by Member Schwartz and seconded by Member Hinkson to approve the recommendation of administrative hearing panel regarding the waiver of suspended expulsion for student number Three zero two nine three seven with a vote of five zero. It was moved by Member Barclay and seconded by Member Schwartz to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the suspended expulsion for student number two nine three six two zero with a vote of five zero. It was moved by Member Hinkson and seconded by Member Schwartz to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the waiver of suspended expulsion for student number 290273 with a vote of five to zero. It was moved by Member Barclay and seconded by Member Hinkson to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the waiver of suspended expulsion for student number 44069 with a vote of five to zero. It was moved by Member Hinkson and seconded by Member Schwartz to approve the release of certificated temporary contract employee numbers 312404, 317825, 310775, 263407, 246389, 178553. 309552 effective at the conclusion of the 2021-22 school year with a vote of 5 to 0. It was moved by Member Hinkson and seconded by Member Barclay to approve the settlement agreement for case number 7017290 with a vote of 5 to 0. It was moved by Member Hinkson and seconded by Member Barclay to approve the compromise and release agreement for case number 20220108220 slash 20220308826 with a vote of 5 to 0. It was moved by Member Hinkson and seconded by Member Barclay to approve the compromise and release agreement for case number 220220 with a vote of five to zero. It was moved by Member Hinkson and seconded by Member Barclay to accept the claim for damages for SG received on April 8th, 2022 with a vote of five to zero. That is all. Thank you for that. Uh, before the board meeting began, the board recognized our county spelling bee winner, Haley Fu. You might have seen the giant trophy walking out of here. 
Um, we also have the opportunity for our community advisory committee connection awardees and our district's instructional coaches. Now on to the best student spotlight. You ready? Start with Chaparral, Summer Rashidi and Avery Page. Yeah. Or you guys. Well, <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit of a half and half here. So hello, hello, hello again. So I'm still Jaden. And I'm still E. And as you might, I'm sure, I hope you guys know, but this is the last um, student spotlight. And so this is the last time you'll be seeing our two lovely faces. Um, and because of that, that, the names up there are correct. We won't actually be giving this one to you, but we still wanted to come up here to say um, goodbye. It's been a very fun time being able to give this little student spotlight to you guys, e whether it was from the uh, great length of the TV stage or in here where you can see the whites of your eyes. Um, it has been a really good time. Any of you want to say anything? Yeah, we're just, we're just super proud of our uh, incoming presidents and they're really awesome and I think you're gonna have a great year listening to them instead of us after this so without further ado here are Avery and Summer. Okay hello um, I'm Summer and I'm Avery and you guys are stuck with us because we have obviously been chosen for the student spotlight for the next school year. And to start off, I just wanted to congratulate our girls lacrosse team. They actually played their round three of CIF today. They fought hard, but unfortunately they lost. But I went to a couple of their games, and they're, they're really good. Yes. Um, last week during lunch, we had tables of every single culture ran by students to embrace diversity um, on campus. At these tables, we had food, dances, clothes, um, pins, pretty much anything students wanted to bring in they could to celebrate pride on our campus. Our visual and performing arts put on an amazing show. They performed Something Rotten, and it was actually sold out, and I heard it was really funny. Everyone was talking about it at school. Yeah. Um, last week, we celebrated our awesome admin and teachers. We had lots of donations from local um, businesses and big corporations, and we were able to make goodie bags, um, host raffles, and have a lot of lunch-ins. Um, our students showed spirit and pride um, by wearing black and white or polka dots um, because that's Miss Miller's favorite. Um, and on behalf of our students, thank you for, um, to all of our staff for all you do for us. And prom for us is this Saturday. I am so excited. <laughs> um, not only, okay, it's gonna be at the National History Museum in Babo Park, San Diego. And besides dancing, there's gonna be photo stations everywhere. There's gonna be a milkshake bar, an espresso bar, Fresh flower crown makings, that's gonna be cool. Um, there's a rooftop jazz band, and there's gonna be a psychic. Yeah, um, students are super excited as we sashed our senior prom court. Um, students will be able to vote out, um, out of the four duos, um, old style, which is the ballot in the box. <laughs> and last week we held a lunch event for our seniors celebrating their college or military commitment and it, we called it our Senior Commitment Ice Cream Social. And they basically took pictures with everyone, like they all wore, like came to school wearing their college shirt or military shirt, and they obviously had ice cream. The need for blood never takes a vacation. Next week we have our last blood drive and we're hoping for a really successful turnout. Um, what a better way to end off our school year with a rally. It's gonna be May 25th and ASB is hosting an exciting show featuring Tahitian Dance Cheer and our dance program, PFX. In the last couple of weeks, we've had the infamous AP testing. Um, great job to all of our students for their hard work and dedication, and thank you for all of our staff for all the support. Um, that's you? Oh yeah. Um, yesterday, I had the opportunity to represent Chaparral with Jaden at the Riverside County Board of Education Leadership Conference. We talked about challenges we faced this school year and how to implement changes for next year. And around October or November of next year, we're all gonna come together to share ideas and we're super excited. And thank you all for your time and for an amazing school year. And that's all we have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Chaparral's in good hands. Moving on to Great Oak. Uh, Rayla Flores, are you here by yourself tonight? Yes. Okay, so just Rayla. <laughs> Here's the flyers I have for you guys. Um, 
while you guys are passing that down. I just wanted to say hi, everyone. I'm so, so happy to be back here to share with you guys one last time about what's happening at Great Oak. As you all can surely imagine, we have been busier than ever back to the hustle and bustle of May and all of the activities to conclude the school year with. Many groups on campus are having their end of the year banquets such as Ohana, theater, band, leadership, yearbook. They're sad yet excited to get together one last time this year and give a big thanks to the seniors and kind of say their final goodbyes. Last week was our last spirit week of the year. The different days included May the 4th Be With You, where they could dress up as their favorite Star Wars character, Country versus Country Club Day, and Dress Like a Parent Day, where soccer moms and barbecue dads filled the campus. This spirit week led to up to our prom on Saturday at the Richard Nixon Library. To say I had fun at prom would be a complete understatement. I honestly had the time of my life. I will never forget that beautiful night where we got to take our tour through the original home of Richard Nixon, or the live, band out, live jazz band outside where I danced the night away with my amazing date, William Lobb, or the chocolate fondue fountain with all the all-you-can-eat strawberries, marshmallows, and more. Also, there was a ballroom DJ where we didn't quite waltz, but instead jumped around going crazy and having a blast with our best friends. Upcoming, though, we have grad night on the 20th at Disneyland. Um, we have Spirit Wards on the 24th. We have Senior Sunset on the 31st, Walk of Gratitude on June 1st, and of course, graduation on June 2nd. In other news, at the Percussion Scholastic Open, AKA PSO, our drumline won a gold medal. In this past school year, Great Oak has won eight league championships, the most in the Southwestern League. Those being boys and girls cross country, boys and girls golf, boys and girls tennis, boys basketball, and girls swimming. Spring athlete and academic signing ceremonies occurred within the past month, where 11 students signed athletic commitments and 25 students signed academic commitments. Last weekend, 35 teachers were awarded the Crystal Apple at the Crystal Apple Award Ceremony. Last Friday, the Outstanding Athlete Breakfast, which uh, hosted the, last Friday was the Outstanding Athlete Breakfast, which hosted the Male Athlete of the Year, Michael Rada, Female Athlete of the Year, Divine Torza, as well as two out of the 12 Citrus Belt Area Athletic Director Association Scholarship winners from Great Oak, Nico Contoro and Timothy Dole. Also, track is still competing in CIF, moving on to finals. May 14th is the Great Oak Pow Wow, which will be sponsored by the Indigenous Peoples Club from 12 to 8 p.m. on campus at the stadium. Finally, we're looking forward to our spectacular, spectacular prom on May 21st. But before I conclude, in honor of my very last school board meeting, I would like to give each one of you members, each one of you members of the school board, a really big thank you for giving me the opportunity to stand before you and share all of the amazing things our students and staff are doing on campus. Before I go, I would also like to share with you one of the essays I wrote on my UC applications. This particular essay is actually about a certain school board meeting that I presented back in the beginning of the school year. I don't know if you guys remember it, but it was when we were in the theater across um, the street over at TVHS. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read that for you guys. A thousand eyes on me. My original job description, to represent the GOHS student body, to prepare a speech once a month about the well-being of our campus, to present that speech to a board of public officials with minimal audience, nor exhilaration. However, I failed to anticipate that a deadly virus spreading across the world would soon propel me into the front lines of the political extremes, garnering audiences so numerous that the maximum capacity was hit and some watch, some watch the windows, that I would be within arm's reach of altercation between a teacher and a parent during a public comment. I'm the president of both partisan and bipartisan political youth clubs on my campus, my slogan being a safe place to talk politics. And it is from these experiences that I actively hear diverse political opinions from my peers. Yet nothing could have prepared me for the torch I would carry guiding my community into a meeting, not a war. When I stepped to the podium, I knew it was my chance to unite a theater full of people who were so bitterly divided. The moment I had been preparing for. A script in one hand and in the other were vibrant flyers displaying precious moments on campus caught on camera. This was my opportunity to speak words of hope, of joy. As soon as the words escaped my mouth, I was on fire, brimming with a flame of eagerness, recounting homecoming, Rachel's rally, club rush, and Ivy family game night. I illuminated the room with my energy. I felt the flame of resentment that once radiated from all sides of the room slowly turn into embers as I weaved beautiful stories of the homecoming queen's tears of joy and the dashing eyes towards the explosion of colors merging from the glimmering fireworks that filled the air. 
Yes, I was that dramatic. I wanted these fiery people to feel something chilling within my words, to experience a moment from my mere enthusiasm. A thousand hands erupted with applause, the school board cheered, and so did I. So, as you guys remember, I shared last month that I was accepted to UC Irvine to study political science, and I cannot wait to go there in the fall. Again, I just want to thank you so, I want to, again, thank you so much to President Adam Skumowitz, Barbara Brosh, Sandy Hinkskin, uh, Allison Barclay, Stephen Schwartz, Lena Akbar, and um, Dr. Jody McClay, Kimberly Vallas, Nicole Lash, Dr. Karen Vallas, and all of the staff and faculty members who make this school district what it is. Truly made these past few years such an amazing learning experience, and I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you for that, Rayla. Emily and Lana. Okay, hi everyone. We're so happy to see you, but we're a little upset that it's our last time. Um, we have so much to update you on for the rest of the school year, so let's get started. Last time we saw you, we were talking about the blood drive prom and the cast testing. The blood drive went well, and we had so many volunteers who all earned a red honor cord for their donation. Prom was so much fun and an amazing night for juniors and seniors after these crazy few years. We had a record-breaking number of students after pairing with Rancho Vista, 1,200 students. There was an awesome DJ, photo booths, face painting, a flower crown station, a killer dessert bar, and so much for everyone to do and enjoy. Since then, we held our mental health workshop. ASB and the Key Club went into classrooms with the journals and a presentation for advisement classes, talking to about 300 students on a conversation about mental health and the difference between coping and distracting. It was a worthwhile experience and everyone or for everyone, and we hope it made a positive impact. This Friday is packed full of fun. We started the, we'll start off the day at lunchtime with the senior barbecue where all the seniors will eat food for the first time the whole year in their cars. The lunch will be provided, of course, and that evening we'll have bears in the theater for the ASL showcase signing to popular Hollywood movie songs. We'll have even more bears in the mini gym for Dancing with the Bears, which is our signature, Dancing with the Stars, um, and that, that will contain Varsity Dance Team Alliance along with our Varsity Sports Stars. And then we'll have another handful of bears in the pack for the last improv show of the year. AP testing is coming to a close this week. We started with our AP government seniors on May 2nd, and it's obviously been a little stressful for our bears, but we have powered through it, and it's insane to see how many students are taking APs this year. It's a lot. <laughs> This upcoming Monday, we'll be hosting our f commitment signing day. Ooh, long line, sorry, y'all. This upcoming Monday will be our final senior class meeting. We have lots of topics to cover from grad seat selection, senior sunset, movie night, walk of gratitude, the senior knots trip, commitment signing day, senior awards night, and all the way to the big one and graduation. All of us seniors, including me, can all be more excited for these next few weeks, but I am a little sad it's ending really fast. We are most excited for Commitment Signing Day and Senior Awards Night. Commitment Signing Day will take place on the 24th during third period after senior breakfast, where over 100 of our seniors will be walking the stage, taking a photo, and signing a poster stating they've committed to a certain college, military branch, vocational school, or wherever their future education leads them. This event truly shows us where all our hard work leads to, and I cannot be prouder of my peers. Senior Awards Night will follow on the same day with tons of seniors being honored for different achievements such as 200 plus hours of community service and our Bears core values. Our sports teams continue to impress us. Our boys lacrosse team were the Southwestern League Championships and as a team earned the CIF Academic Award for the highest boys average GPA. Boys tennis and girls uh, swim had the highest average GPA out of all of our sports team for the se spring season and were able to celebrate at a luncheon with the athletic director. There are a number of Golden Bears on the mountain biking team and they earned the Division I championship title last weekend. Our annual film festival takes place on the 17th. We have 16 students signed up and they all hold a lot of talent. There are a variety of film styles, including pub public service announcements, and we're excited to see all the hard work these bears put into it. 
We're working on putting things into place for the following school year to better help out the student body. We'll have bi-weekly teacher-student check-ins, more after-school homework help, combined advisement classes that include all grade levels, and more lunchtime intramurals and activities. Another big event we're looking forward to is our recognition rally on May 20th. This will be our first rally of the entire year held indoors, just like old times, and we're working hard to make up for lost time, so we'll be recognizing clubs, sports, staff members, and achievements from throughout the year. It's going to be a not-so-despicable me rally as we encourage the student body to wear their gold shirts and overalls like a minion and hopefully recreate the steal the moon moment. And that's all we have to leave you with for the rest of the school year. This won't be your last time seeing Lana, but it will be for me. So I wanted to say thank you for this amazing opportunity and allowing me to come speak to you all every month and also letting me create new friendships. Here's one last, stay, stay golden. golden. you all of you uh, moving on next we have our TVEA spotlight with mr. Jeff Kingsburg thank you mr. Skumowitz good to be with you all tonight I guess I'll just accept it I guess the TVA spotlight is your second favorite part of the meeting I'm just gonna have to come to grips with that I, I thought we were working our way up to number one but oh well anyway um, I want to share that both uh, TVA and the district have expressed interest in exploring the issue of 22-23 compensation this month in hopes of achieving a timelier settlement than we saw for 2021-22. Uh, we have sent our members a preview of a feedback tool that we're gonna send out on Friday uh, to compile input for upcoming negotiations. Also in reviewing the agenda tonight, specifically the personnel listings, TVA is pleased to see an expected conversion in the status of 36 of our um, temporary status uh, workers to probationary status for July uh, 2022. It's reassuring to see the district uh, take action to retain and invest in our newer employees. May is an extremely busy time for us at TVA, yet also a rewarding month at the same time as we get to recognize teachers and students for their outstanding efforts. Uh, our Leadership Council has completed selections for our Advocacy Series Awards. These awards are based on our conviction that our members are dedicated and committed advocates for teaching and learning. Our 2021-22 recipients are. Uh, for dedicated, we have Brian Bolaris of Susan Nelson High, TVA Bargaining Committee Chair. He wins every year, what's, what's up with that? Uh, for committed, we have Amy Etchison, our uh, Temecula Elementary teacher and TVA secretary. For our Advocate of the Year, we have Julianne Dickinson, Great Oak High School intervention specialist and our LCAP committee chair. And then for our Proven Leader of Success Award, uh, our council voted for Kelly Maxey, Vail Ranch Middle School CTE teacher and TVA political action committee member. Also last night, uh, elementary executive board member Anastasia Borkosh and I presented 22 TVA high school graduating senior student scholarships at the Dollars for Scholars Awards Night. And another great thing about May, I had the pleasure of representing TVA at the Crystal Apple Awards on Sunday, May 1st, that's hosted by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The church honored 91 of our high school teachers who were nominated by the students for making a positive impact on their life. One teacher from each comprehensive high school received the 2022 Crystal Apple Award, and I'd like to give them a shout out. Congratulations to TVA members Luke Leatherman, who's an English language arts teacher at Chaparral High, Michelle Ingram, math teacher at Temecula Valley High, but a graduate of Chaparral High, and Natalie Vargas, world language teacher at Great Oak High School. So hey, on a personal note, this is my final spotlight uh, to the governing board. Um, so I'm gonna go a bit longer tonight, not too long though. Um, my retirement from TVSD has been submitted and approved for June 10th. I wanna thank everyone for their collaboration over the last eight years while I've served as TVA president. I'm certainly being delegated to act as the chief spokesperson and advocate uh, for our nearly 1,300 educator members has surely been a challenge, 
um, yet also quite an honor and rewarding as well. In terms of what I would want the cabinet board and community to know on my way out the door, s serving as TVA president was only one role that I played in this district. Nearly 80% of my 35 years was spent as a history social science teacher at both Temecula Valley High for 10 years and then Chaparral, excuse me, Chaparral High for 17 years. I'm not getting choked up, I promise. Um, anyway, during that time, I had many opportunities to grow as an educator by serving students and staff, such as coaching both boys and girls basketball for 12 years, serving as a district mentor teacher in both social science and community service learning, representing my department as a chair, and teaching advanced placement government and politics for 11 years. In that time of preparing students for the AP exam, I sought to enrich the curriculum by emphasizing the collaborative study of the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights through a mock competitive congressional hearing program called We the People, the Citizen and the Constitution. It was especially rewarding to see students grow both intellectually and in their personal confidence through the study of analyzing these founding documents. Five times our AP class won regional Riverside, San Diego area titles and qualified to compete in the California State Finals in Sacramento. Temecula and Temecula Valley Unified have been good to my family over the last 35 years. My wife Rosemary, who is a teacher in Hemet, and I raised our two daughters here. They are both graduates of Chaparral High and are now successful young women who both graduated from University of California schools and subsequently have earned master's degrees. In closing, I had an alternative opportunity to take a job in Orange County in 1987 where I was raised. Yet as the poet Robert Frost wrote in The Road Not Taken, you know it, right? Two roads diverged in a wood and I took the one less, less traveled by and that has made all the difference. I should note the road to Temecula is much more traveled today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. All right, moving on to public comments. The governing board welcomes public comments. This is a time for open session public comments. Public comments are allowed up to a maximum of three minutes per comment in the order received to a maximum total time of 30 minutes per item for comments on agenda items or non-agenda items. For consent agenda item topics, a limit of three minutes will be allowed from one speaker. Unless the item has been placed on the published agenda in accordance with the Brown Act, there shall be no action taken. No discussion will be made regarding personnel issues in open session. All, publics, all, all public comments are an important part of the board meeting and are given careful consideration by the governing board. We have one public comment this evening, is that right? Paul Publico? Me. All right. How you guys doing today? I'll use my teacher voice. Um, my name's Paul. I'm a parent of two daughters at Lucenio Elementary School. I have a third grader and a first grader. And I have a master's in education. I used to be a teacher. I taught special ed. And so earlier, seeing Sarah and Cameron and Chris was so funny, by the way. Um, but like that is the heart of education. And seeing those young people earlier today, just like all those emotions and all those reasons why you're sitting there and the power of education and helping kids is like so palpable and powerful. But I feel like the best part of the meeting was like then, and now you're listening to me talk. So um, I will not waste too much of your time. I sell shade, um, but shade, like, let's talk about shade for a second. Temecula Valley Unified School District is one of the only school districts I know of in California that does not like fabric shade. Um, I'm not sure why, but I'm here to just kind of um, have, promote some awareness. I also sent you guys an email a few weeks ago and a nice little PowerPoint presentation. Adam's nodding. And, um, and, I, and I put a lot of time and thought into it because, um, you know, I met four years ago with the facilities director of this district, and I don't really feel like, um, you know, it went great per se. Um, so that's kind of why I'm here. I, I want to promote some awareness. Shade protects kids. It protects the infrastructure. Um, every Friday, we have Friday flag at Lucenio. Miss Rusi kills it out there. And, uh, and those kids, sometimes it's like 90 degrees. It's like 9 a.m. I get it. Um, we can't control the weather, but we can control, like, how we protect kids. I was riding bikes, uh, don't tell anybody, on the Great Oak campus recently, um, just on, like, you know, not on the campus, you know what I mean. And I saw that there were temporary shade structures, like those little easy ups on campus with, like, students underneath. There's desks in there. I'm thinking in my head, like, Garden Grove Unified purchased like 65 shade structures last year for outdoor learning. 
Uh, I, I was at Chaparral recently for a football tournament. I've, I've been an educator and a football coach for 20 years, and I noticed that the aquatics, I just poked my head into the, the pool, there's like bleachers and like what used to be a shade structure there, but it's not. So people are like roasting. Um, and so I just wanted to like put a name to a face a little bit, and I'll follow up tomorrow with an email to all of you guys as well. Um, yes, I, I, you know, I'm here to promote shade for the district, but there's a million shade companies out there. You do not have to buy from USA Shade, the largest and best company in the world, but you can definitely um, purchase from all these other shade companies, and, and I just really wanna uh, just make sure that shade is on your radar, so to speak. You know, I work with San Diego Unified, San Marcos, Unified, where I was a teacher, I taught at Torrey Pines High School. Um, all the districts in, in San Diego that I work with uh, would be willing to give recommendations and all that fun stuff. Uh, and they're all DSA approved and they last for like 20 years. So uh, there was a time, maybe like 10 or 15 years ago, where, where it didn't go well, or maybe they didn't last very long, but those times are behind us. You know, Engineering and technology has, uh, has really, really improved. So uh, I won't take any more of your time. I really, really appreciate what you guys do. Um, I don't have any constructive criticism on how you guys do your, your business. Uh, we moved here from Carlsbad because um, the schools are seconds. awesome and uh, we appreciate you guys. So I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you. Okay, on to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine and all will be enacted with one vote. There's no discussion of consent calendar items unless members of the governing board or staff request that specific items be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. I believe we have a request to remove two items. Is that right? Can you eight, remind me which ones there? Say eight, it again. Eight and 20. Okay, we'll be pulling items eight and 20. Got that. Okay, I call for a motion and a second to approve by consent items one through Seven, seven, nine through 19, 19 and 21 through 32 <laughs> that were not pulled for sec separate action or tabled. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Is Mr. Schwartz on? Okay. Did you get a positive response though? Mr. Schwartz? Yes. I heard a Mr. Schwartz, I couldn't hear you. I have to. Uh, I said yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, I call for a motion a second to approve consent item number eight. eight. That was pulled for separate action. I need a motion. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schwartz. Questions on this, Mrs. Hinkson? Okay, so um, can you bring up item number eight, the contract on that, please? So I guess I just have some additional questions on this. If the title of this is, can we see the title on the item? Inspire Social. So I guess my question on this is just really if we could get a little bit more information on it. When I look at the contract, um, if you can open that up, it's really describing creating logos for six elementary schools says rebranding and logo design up to six separate elementary uh, school sites. So um, I, I guess I'd like a little more information on what this company is doing for us, what they have done, if this amount that we're adding is strictly for the purpose of um, uh, logos for those six schools or just a little better picture on this before yeah. we approve Good it. evening. Um, yes, I can speak to this. My name is Jimmy Evans, and I'm uh, principal on special assignment, uh, filling in the PIO position. Um, yes, we're looking to inspire social. Um, Shauna and her company are one of the ones that we are helping us out with the uh, graphic art and, and artists in terms of redoing some of our logos throughout our schools. And what's happening is right now it's actually in my information presentation tonight, so you'll see more of that, and I can give you more information then as well. But really what we're doing is trying to upgrade all our logos. We've had schools that had logos for many years, and so what we're trying to do is take some of those logos and freshen them up and not only just add the logos themselves, but the branding guide, which includes animations and other things that go beyond just the logo. So we're really trying to up our game in terms of our um, uh, our delivery of, of, of you know videos, what's going to be on our website. We're really trying to take, if you see home instead, a lot of the graphics you guys saw earlier in the year with what was produced, that was all Inspire Social. So if you saw the um, 
the beehive with uh, um, everything that's going on with the hornets, which is you've seen that in the, the graphics, that the brochures that are going out, the posters, all of that is part of the branding guide. So yes, it is the logos, but one of the things that we wanted to bring to specifically to the increase was because we have so many logos that are kind of behind the times, we really wanted to focus in on developing some of our schools and having those logos updated. Okay, so can we look back at the topic sheet? I'm, I'm just curious down at the financial impact there. So the original cost was 60,000 and it's an additional 28 for six rebranding. So what was the original 60,000? What did that So the for? initial 60,000, which was prior than within I was here, but really what they're for is helping us. So she helps post all our social media. She also helps with branding in terms of all the COVID graphics she's generated. So it was much more extensive in what she's done for the district. Now specifically, we wanted to make it very specific on what we wanted added instead of just general, oops, sorry. So just general, um, help and support from the company that we were being charged for, we want to very specifically do those logos and make sure that was a part of the new moving Okay, forward. so and the additional 28,000 is for six logos, right? So we haven't done any other schools. We're just no, no, selecting we, six right now, from besides our, Home Instead. From our current contract, we've been doing some. We've done Home Instead. They're working on Paba Valley. I'll show you the graphic tonight. And they're working on about four or five right now. Okay. But specifically, we want to make sure that it was targeted towards those logos versus other things because we think that that's a priority from a communications office uh, perspective. So we just want to make sure that in that extra expenditure, it was, it was targeted for that. And Mrs. And Hinkson, if I could just add, the first 60,000 did a lot of our Home Instead videos and advertising and things like that for specifically for Home Instead. Okay, and these six um, schools now that are going to be um, getting the logo designs, rebranding, whatever, whatever it is, um, uh, is there an intent to move forward with all of the schools or are we picking out like um, the ones that are in most need or how, how I, do we I think that those? it's it's a combination it's the ones that we have identified as in the most need as well as um, there's different parts in leadership and being a former principal knowing that there's time for that revamping and so I think that we're being sensitive to all all stakeholders involved but when they're ready want to have the ability to bring them up in some of the graphics and bring them into kind of the, the new look and the modernization okay. of their and, logos and graphics. And this is elementary. We haven't really addressed any middle school, well, high school. The yet. six are elementary because they're a little bit simpler. If you've gone through a branding guide like at mm -hmm. Shaft, we did, did it recently, it's much more extensive. So we thought if we targeted elementary, it would be very specific to because it's a little bit less of, of, of a, of a overhaul, I would say. And so there may be more coming down the we're, pike we're, here. I'm, I, it would be my personal <laughs> agenda to try to update all of the sites um, when it's the right time. So being sensitive to our employees as well as to the staff and culture they're trying to build. But yeah, absolutely, we'd love to see the progress of all of our um, our branding, our logos to increase across okay, the district. Okay, and what about the district as a total? Is there a, a look at that? That that's so coming if up I may, as well. sure. Okay, <laughs> most of this is going to be in Mr. Evans's update on the okay. communications updating the information item. So if you want, we could revisit consent item number eight after the information report, if you no, like. No, I just needed some further information because, you know, we're approving this and voting on it. I really wanted to have a picture of what am I voting for, right? And so um, I think I have a, a pretty good picture now and more detail to come is what you're saying, correct? Yes, absolutely. All right, thank you. All Can right. I ask one more quick question? Sure. Since we're talking about <laughs> it. Um, I noticed in the contract that it's basically um, like a monthly installment, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's gonna be extended for a few months. So does that mean, even though it's monthly installment, that they will definitely get those six logos done in that extended time? Yeah, the point would be to get the six logos finished. I know that there's, um, it's interesting in the summer and how it transitions, but we wanna make sure that, yeah, those, those are accomplished at some capacity throughout. So we wanna make sure that it was done by logo versus by time. So we wanna make sure that we get those done. Okay, because it looks like in the contract it's, I think that I can't speak specifically to the contract in terms of the financial <laughs> implication, but the goal would be to try to get those six logos in our elementaries. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank okay, you. We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's adopted 5-0. Call for a motion a second to approve consent item number 20 that was pulled for separate action. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barkley. Questions, Mrs. Hinkson? Yeah, so I'm, I'm seeing some, throughout the agenda, we have some various things related to the K-8 or K-6 school. It's being referenced in two different frameworks. Are the, the K-8, when we're talking about 
notices of completion this has to do with architectural services for the case six and i know that we did have some discussion about what the school might look like for the upcoming year um, but i guess what i'm questioning here is um, so so this is the architectural design for moving forward to open the school as a k-6 school um, and we didn't have a whole lot of conversation about that decision being K-6 versus K-8. My concern, and I'm just, this is my question, is um, both of the schools in that area, both Alamos and Bella Vista, are very impacted with students. And so part of um, the idea of having a K-8 school was to provide a little bit of relief there. Um, and so moving it as a K-6 school, is there a plan for Bella Vista or is there a plan to expand this to K-8? So, so, so that's my question here because once we approve the architectural services, now we're moving forward with the next step, the next step, the next step, right? right? The so project will move forward as a K-6. The, yeah, the thought process behind that is that all of the facilities that would be required for a m true middle school, such as locker rooms, uh, band room, choir room, all of those would be part of phase three. And so while we might be able to grow into that, we're talking phase two right now. And in fact, at the next board meeting, we'll be bringing together a project list for you to review for what phase two looks like. And so the thought was year one, which not this coming year, but the following year, right? 2023, 24 is what we're preparing for the opening for. Um, it would relieve Bella Vista to some extent and Alamos because it's a K-6, right? Um, it is the thought there but that phase three would include the full build out of those facilities to make it a full. And I know we keep saying K, I, we, we need to update this to say TK, but TK through eighth grade, we could probably get through um, with existing classroom space if we needed to, um, if we wanted to grow that before phase three came, since we're not quite sure when that will happen. So we're not committed to keeping it TK through six. I think those discussions will be coming um, as to what program it is, all, all of those good things are coming. This is just to get an architect on board so we can start costing out things for the project list for you to consider. And I know uh, later on we'll be talking the, the process through the lease lease back to make sure that we make that timeline of August 2023. Okay, thank you. That really helps clarify because I thought we were making a decision to make it a TK through six I apologize. Period. Yeah, no. No. So, no. All right, thank you very much. Okay, great. We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Motion carries 5-0. At this point, Mrs. Velez would like to do some introductions. I thought after the student awards it couldn't get any better, but this will be times two. So if I can have Gwen Riley. Um, please come up and Leticia de Morel. And I'm inviting them up at the same time because the three of us have worked together for a really long time. And so this is a, actually a special moment for me too. I'm super excited. Um, I'm actually going to introduce Ms. Gwen Riley first. So Gwen is currently our, uh, one of our amazing program specialists in our office. She has been, actually I've known Gwen since we were back, way back at Cobb Valley, Valley together <laughs> when I was principal. But um, we are recommending tonight that um, Ms. Riley move from her program specialist role to the coordinator of autism. Um, she's been 30 years in teaching. Um, she began teaching in 1990 actually in Hawaii. Um, and she grew up in northern Minnesota. And she still has family back there and I get all the farm stories and I just love it, it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, she received her first teaching credential um, from Bemidji State Bemidji? Bemidji. Is that Bemidji? Okay. State Bemidji. University Bemidji <laughs> in Minnesota and attended Cal State Fullerton, Cal State San Marcos, and National University. She has a multiple subject teaching credential, a mild moderate special education credential, a moderate to severe special education credential, an orthopedic impairment certificate, a master's in special ed, and an administrative credential. Um, she's been married to Chuck Riley, her husband, who I see over there, for almost 30 years. Um, he's retired from the Marine Corps and currently working for General Atomics, right? 
um, as an electrician. They have two children, Kara Smith, who lives in San Diego with her husband, and actually her son um, is in the Navy, Charlie Riley, and both of them were at Pava Valley with me, and they were this big, so I feel really old right now. <laughs> um, but her favorite thing is sewing and making quilts, and the one thing I can say about Gwen is she is the most handy person I know, the most creative person I know, but she will be absolutely perfect for this position in advocating for our students with autism. So congratulations. And next, I'd like to introduce Leticia de Morel. Um, I met Leticia probably, I don't know, almost 12, 13 years ago. We've worked together a really long time. She has 20 years in education. She's been 15 years in our district. She is currently um, the coordinator of autism. So you see what's going on here, right? Um, and she is moving actually to the assistant director um, position of special education upon board approval. Um, she was raised by the most loving and religious um, family. But th and this actually I didn't know about you, but at the age of 18, she spent five years volunteering in the mountains of Mexico and in the jungles of Ecuador, helping, her community, helping the community and teaching children. She graduated from Cal State Fresno with a degree in psychology and obtained a master, master's degree in social work. She earned a doctorate in educational psychology from Alliant University in San Diego. She is a diplomat of the American Board of School Neuro, Neuropsychology and a licensed educational psychologist. She holds an administrative service credential. She holds a pupil service, service credential in school psychology, school social work, school counselor, and child welfare and attendance, which is actually quite rare and you're actually the only person I know that has that. Um, she is blessed with a 28-year-old son and has two beautiful grandchildren who I think are in the back back there, right? And um, her wonderful fiance, um, Kirk, is back there videotaping all of us right at this moment. Um, and I think, I think I could tell you off the top of my head what her most favorite thing to do in the world is. It's traveling and spending time with those grandbabies in the back. So, Leticia, you're going to be amazing as an assistant director side by side with Ms. Hilton, and I'm excited for your new adventure. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I guess this is my second time up here tonight. Um, thank you. Um, I, I'm very honored to be um, up here tonight and being able to be um, moved to this new role, um, to be able to step in and and move what Leticia has already got us um, to and to be able to move it forward. And I know that um, I've been surrounded by a wonderful group of people who have so much knowledge and background that I've learned from and I can't wait to, to continue this whole role of helping others and helping our kids and moving our district forward with our kids with autism. So thank you. Thank you for your confidence in me, and I humbly accept this position. And I really want to thank all of my coworkers in, in special education. Without them, it would have never been possible for me to reach this position. Um, they have supported me and helped me at every step in this job. Um, and I want to give special thanks to Ms. Velez, Ms. Hilton, and Ms. Paradise for their uh, trust and their guidance. And big thanks to my family who are here for their, their love and support. And finally, I just want to assure everyone that with the help and collaboration of the amazing staff in special education, I will work hard with our department in providing uh, high quality teaching and learning for all, making sure that students with disabilities are included and they benefit from the best uh, learning situations possible. We will continue to uh, create inclusive classrooms where general education teachers and special education teachers work together to um, meet the needs of all students. Thank you again for finding confidence in me uh, to assign such a dignified position. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a five minute break. Um, I just want to set the stage that when we have this opportunity, we like to remind everyone that Temecula's philosophy for devices is we want teachers and students to have the tools they need that best fits the learning. COVID made us think that devices are it and everything. 
And as the person who represents technology, it's not everything. Of course, the teacher and the student are essential to the learning. So we are working through the transition as a one-to-one -one district, um, but I like to have this opportunity so everyone hears the district message, is that the tools are there for the teachers to determine the best use of learning and when to use them, okay? So we're gonna start with curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And I'm actually just gonna address um, curriculum and assessment right now. Um, instruction we'll get to a little later, just because um, it's a little more complex. So the idea of what we've used to do for instruction was um, a curriculum and then the textbooks. But when we writ wrote this Future Ready Plan, we had a few pieces in place. We were a Google district, and we did have district-adopted textbooks that had digital platforms, Envision Math, Wonders, and StudySync. The rest of this is all new. Um, this year, we adopted Amplify Science for the TK5, and it's our first fully digital curriculum adoption. So that was a big transition, but we thought it was a good use of technology as we went to one-to-one -one iPads to provide students the opportunity and teachers the opportunity to use the device appropriately. So then learning management systems were a part of the Future Ready Plan as well. Um, and so we've added Canvas and Seesaw, as you know, and those platforms, again, this year everyone thought they were coming back to uh, normal. And as I shared earlier, with the year starting out with quarantining and up until before spring break with masks, it has been very different than how people expected to come back. And we depended on Canvas and Seesaw to continue to post lessons and assignments for students who were still working from home. And as teachers who were quarantined but able to work, were working from home as well. So those tools have really supported us. But the game changers for us as a district were iReady, um, iReady is to provide personalized instruction for students. We give a benchmark in uh, the beginning of the school year, in December, and at the end of the school year. And it determines where a child is, and then it personalizes that instructional program for them. Our district and many of our teachers and PLC teams are using iReady as their first tier one intervention for students who are at risk or below grade level, because 15 minutes a day or 45 minutes a week I already guarantees progress for these students. So we are seeing a wonderful resource, and we're actually using that TK-8 and looking at the opportunity for um, high school. GoGuardian is a um, tool that we just added two months ago because secondary, six through 12, we're struggling with the Chromebook use and students' um, off-task behaviors. And so we wanted to get students uh, and give teachers controls, so this allows them to control the device, to send information to the students, to freeze it when it's not time, and to manage devices in that way. A game changer for instruction in this new environment. And then Nearpod is our first adopted uh, program. It allows teachers to take like their PowerPoints or their Google Slides that they traditionally used and make them more interactive and control the lesson pace and where students are. So that is happening on both the iPads and the Chromebooks at all levels. And we provide, our coaches are providing training and ongoing support so that teachers can begin to utilize these tools more effectively in their classroom. That's our curriculum. Um, assessment, uh, so uh, we just wanna continue to provide 21st century resources to our teachers and students. And we are amazed at what the CARES Act and the funding that came over these past two years. We as a district never thought we'd be one-to-one. -one. When we wrote this plan two years ago, we were hoping to get you know four-to-one. <laughs> and that we are a one-to-one -one district is absolutely amazing. And everyone's transition to that has been phenomenal. Um, and we'll talk about that a little more. The assessments, as we've shared, we have district assessments in TK5. In our Google Drive, curriculum design teams have created that. So any new teacher that comes along um, gets the curriculum. And then we have that for English Language Arts 612 and Math 612. And our new um, coaches are working with the teams to develop science curriculum for all new science teachers to come and use and social studies curriculum with their teams as well. So it's exciting that we just continue to build and build supports for our staff so that they can continue to provide student learning. Um, 
We have a specific focus each year. So we put it for this year. We want to ex expect risk-taking in educators as they explore innovative practices with digital learning through digital content aligned with curriculum. It's a lot of words. Um, we really just want people to realize it's okay to fail. You have to go in there and try some of this stuff with the students. Um, the students are the digital natives. We're the digital immigrants. They understand this language and the technology so much better. So we have to utilize them in a very different way. And we want teachers to realize that's a safe thing to do and to try those experiences. So um, risk taking is what we're looking for with curriculum assessment and instruction. Use of space and time is our next gear. And when we think of space and time, we think of the school day, six hours, or we think of 58 minutes, uh, 48 minutes for a period. But it's, it's more than that. It's really the space now. Technology has allowed our students, like for the iReady, to not only work within the school day, but they can have that device at home. And now they're doing the same activity or work at home and have access. So we have students doing a lot more than their six hour school day and uh, being provided a lot more interaction and lessons going with them. Um, so our goal is to really um, continue to develop educators in understanding personalized learning opportunities. That's hard when our students come with such diverse needs, and it's a, it's a true cultural shift. But research shows that's the way students learn best, and we want to continue to work as a district in working towards personalized learning opportunities for students. And then again, um, equity is awesome that we are providing devices for any and every student. It's amazing. We want student-centered learning environments, and our schools are just growing with that. Um, and then we just want to support, for this focus, a district innovative model. Um, we are seeing new and different things happen in this new environment, and we are learning from that, and we want teachers to continue to look at that so we can learn from that. A robust infrastructure is pretty self-explanatory. Um, we want to have a real uh, infrastructure, and that really um, requires all departments. I'm up here representing instructional technology. That's my title. However, instructional technology is with all of our directors in every department. IMS, uh, Jose's in the back, and he runs the digital safety, making sure uh, the infrastructure for uh, networking, all of uh, the Wi-Fi, all of those pieces. His department manages the 30,000 devices when you look at the one-to-one -one and then all the interactive boards with like nine to 12 people. It's absolutely amazing what they do to support us as a district, but it's a solid infrastructure. They have a system with a ticket system in place and we're doing it in a timely way. ESS is providing the instructional aspects of it and working professionally development with teachers and trying to grow their skills in moving forward with 21st century classroom, which is feeling very different to everyone as we've returned. Fiscal, this is the most collaborative year. You know, I've been in this role for seven years. This is the most collaborative year as all departments come together. We're working with facilities for that learning spaces and time and what's best for learning so that we can change what the classroom, we're getting sustainable Funding as our first one, that is key. When I came, they said, Chris, you're in charge of instructional technology, no budget. <laughs> there you got, got a minute, that was it. <laughs> and we've grown it so since that time. It is amazing the infrastructure that we have and the commitment that the board and the district has made to really investing in our students and the 21st century learning environment for instructional technology. I also have Courtenay here with me, who's our Apple Learning Specialist, and the district has a partnership with Apple under Dr. McClay's uh, guidance over the seven years I've been here. She's been working very collaboratively with Apple with a clear focus, and we have taken that vision, and we started it with just 35 teachers, and now we are a complete one-to-one. -one. And Courtenay is our second learning, Apple Learning Specialist, but she worked with the eight coaches here. What you need to know is, and I'll talk about instruction in a little bit, um, our teachers came back at capacity. The learning curve of last year with COVID and what they had to do to reinvent school online, their brains were full. When they came back, they did not want to learn anything digital new. They wanted to get back to what they were comfortable with and to have their life back to a functioning classroom. It's changed. Um, and so a lot of the coaching, they, they weren't receptive to it. 
they, they don't want anything new. So we have utilized Courtenay with the eight coaches, and they've been doing book studies, and they've been working very hard to develop the plan for clear one-on-one -on -one coaching for next year so that we can address the needs and the desires of teachers. Coaching is essential because it's differentiation. It's no longer a one-size-fits-all staff development where you all come and you learn something. Everyone is at such a different level with using technology. We have to personalize it for all of them. So our focus for this is ongoing user-focused professional development and training using Courtenay's expertise. And it's not just about Apple, since we're a K-12 one-on-one. She works for Apple, but good instruction is good instruction. When I went to Apple and was trained myself, it's not about devices. It's about a philosophy. We brought devices to our district to best support Common Core, the four C's, so students can collaborate, they can communicate more effectively, they can critically think at a deeper level, and they can create. We do not want consumers sitting in front of drill and kill websites. We want students creating student-based projects so that they are doing the sense-making and the learning and really the heavy lifting for their education. Data and privacy, again, self-explanatory. That's really Jose and what they do um, for privacy. He manages all that. And you know, when I was a principal, we tease each other because that felt very constraining <laughs> when, when you'd call Jose and he's like, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. <laughs> but on this side of it, and over the seven years, I understand and respect what he does for all of our students and that we are safe. When parents worry about an iPad going home or our, where are our protections, he has managed all that. We have programs in place and it's been exceptional. The big one that I want to introduce tonight is the data. Data is key. As we brought students back, we see that they have needs, and we need to start addressing those needs in a very timely way. Panorama was adopted uh, this year by our accountability and assessment, and we've already trained administrators and hope to train educators next year. It is our database where it takes information from infinite campus grade books. So if I'm a fifth grade class, we just gave the test, the whole fifth grade team, it's in our grade book, we can run a report that night and we can know who failed, who didn't uh, fail, who's successful, we can differentiate and uh, RTI, response to intervention, can happen the next day to help those kids so that we're not wasting time. Traditionally, we had to wait six to eight weeks before we started intervention at the beginning of the school year to know kids. Because iReady is ending this year, we're gonna know on day one where students' levels are and be able to hit them as soon as they come and take them to their next level. So Panorama is an exciting tool, but it not only does the academics, there's more. <laughs> it does the behaviors and it does the social and emotional aspects. So if students are getting referrals, if they're uh, suspended or expelled, their teams on campuses are be able to pull data and be doing interventions for behavior students and for the social and emotional needs, which we know are really um, needy right now at this time. So our focus um, moving forward in this area is to author that authorized users will have access. We want teachers, administrators, everyone to have access to data immediately so that we can best support student needs. And Panorama is another purchase that we've done. That's part of the fiscal responsibility. When you think there was no budget for this, and we are doing, you know, between the learning management systems and all these programs that we've bought and the devices, it's millions that we are now committed to continuing, and it's, it's changing what we do. Community partnerships, um, there hasn't been a lot this year, let's just be real. The community, uh, the, the partners out there are trying to get their own businesses back up and running, and they had to do their work, we needed to do our work. But we will continue to focus on exploring CTE opportunities for us as a district with those community partnerships, and to look for PE and VAPA and elective opportunities for distance learning. It is um, fascinating to me that we wrote this before Home Instead came into fruition um, because those were the issues when we did an online environment for the PE, the VAP, and electives. How do you do it in a distance learning? PE on front of a screen, it, part of its teamwork, you can't do it alone. <laughs> it, it, uh, there's so many pieces that we have to look at. And uh, Sandy McKay is doing a wonderful job with these after-school sessions where kids are coming. They're really coming to the PE for live sessions. 
even though they're in the virtual world, because we're looking at opportunities and we're going to continue to grow those. Personalized professional learning is, I, I, I elaborated earlier on that, but it's really what we need to do. We need to develop a culture that everyone understands that we know you're here, but what's your next step? We want to support you, these coaches, they want to support you in moving forward. We can't stay stagnant. We have to keep moving because today's child is so different and has such different needs that the classroom has to evolve to meet those needs. So we want to personalize that. We have many opportunities. We do it virtually where they are doing videos. You can watch it in your own time. We are providing next year appy hours where they can join us virtually and learn specific apps that we are doing uh, or using in our district so that they can grow their skills. Um, and we just want to always meet teachers' needs. And that's why this team was so powerful, because they not only have the educational expertise, but they have the personal touch where the teachers are responding to them and are inviting them in after they've had them and realizing, I get you more than once and I can keep growing. And so the more we can build and support that, the better off we're going to be as a district. So we want to generate opportunities for real-time, diverse professional development that can occur in the classroom and within teacher teams. I also want everyone to rest this summer because they really need the break. They weren't ready for new things this year, but when we come back in the fall, we have an equipped team and infrastructure to support everyone in moving forward the 21st century classrooms, and we want to be able to do that. There's our instructional coaches, they're key, and this one I just love. So we have Apple seedlings, and those are our students in the district who, early on when I started this, we implemented the smart boards, and we learned that if we train two students in every classroom to support the teacher, the teacher might be a little flustered, the kid will remember because they're digital natives, they'll come and fix it. Well now, our coaches, they initiated this, they're moving it forward and we're going to train, we're piloting right now at Temecula Seno, these, this is so sweet, I saw it on Monday. Those two little girls are first grade. They presented to fifth graders, and they're like, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> they were so unbelievably professional in how they did it. And then they had the uh, Apple TV, they had their iPad, three of them were around the room, modeling like airline stores. <laughs> and they were teaching students apps and features on the iPad to help them grow. Our goal is to help the teacher as well, We've told teachers they don't need to learn every app. The kids know the app. They need to give them the opportunity to use the app to demonstrate their learning. Let these little seedlings be the expert in the classroom that can help the child that doesn't know the app. Let the teacher be the content expert that they've always been and teach the content so the students can share what they've learned. Budget and resources. Um, again, we've already discussed that. Um, our, we just want appropriate funding to continue. Um, I know we are allocated for a little bit of time, um, and Nicole's been wonderful. We met again today with her, Jose and Courtney, and we're thinking through the infrastructure, because there is no more funding for interactive boards. That was a bond, and we don't have that money anymore, and things are aging, and things happen. So we need infrastructure to continue. We can't provide teachers tools, and then once they're gone, say, sorry, figure it out. So we have to figure out how we can best support them. So I, I am ending with this. Apple doesn't use slides. They use a picture. I don't think we wanted to look at a picture the whole time. So <laughs> but I wanted to end with the Apple way and the picture. I saw this rock as we climbed. That was during the pandemic. We were all given this hurdle that we didn't expect. And we climbed it, and we did what we could. The middle section is this year. We thought we were going to get to the other side, and we didn't. Um, and those people down below are the instructional coaches. They're our site admin. They're all specialists within our district that were supporting when there were massive absences and there weren't enough staff to do the job. The district, what people have done this year and why they feel tired is they've done an unbelievable job of supporting this district to move students forward. Hopefully, we'll be on the end next year. They'll come back rested. They'll have had their summer. We have an infrastructure that's unbelievable that we'll be able to really just thrive in this new environment. So that's the update. Any questions or things that I can answer for you? Great.
job, Mr. Dixon. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Hinkson? Just, I guess my comment is, wow, how far have we come in just a very short time in our ability to use technology in the classroom in so many ways, so amazing, just amazing. Um, I did have one question that kind of um, uh, circling back to your presentation a couple years ago, we were talking about um, the fact that California now has new computer science standards, mm -hmm. and um, so the content standards, um, and and at this point they're like voluntary standards. But I think that some of the some of the um, the direction that's in those and the thought that went into them really helps prepare students for um, what's going on in future careers all the way from kindergarten all the way through, and, and as well as many of the things that you're talking about are, mm -hmm. are, are the same kinds of preparations. But um, is there any effort to incorporate those to, I, I'm just looking at it from you know when I was a teacher and at least being aware of what the standards were for my grade. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm, I'm not sure how aware we are that those exist now and what are the relevant standards for the grade level that I teach, mm -hmm. and how might I think about those as I'm teaching different subjects and want to incorporate some of those things into, into um, the way that I'm using technology in my classroom. So can you just speak to that a little bit? I can. We, of course, I, I remember, and we were ready to roll those out, and then COVID hit, and everything kind of changed, and we need to continue to provide that. Here's what I know about us as a district and what our goal was. Our goal when we brought devices um, to the classroom strategically with those 36 to 78 iPads, we wanted to teach people the philosophy of why a device is even in the classroom, not just do a dump and run. And we wanted to train them how to use it effectively. So that's when, been our goal. And we were hugely successful oh, yeah. for that first two, year and a half until COVID hit. Um, that all changed when we were able to do that for the 78 teachers, but the other 1,100 were handed a device in a crisis and were told to replicate instruction of a classroom virtually. We did everything humanly possible to support them through that process. We really need a reset in the fall of this year so that everyone understands why do we even have devices, how do we use them as one-on-one, -on -one, and what standards should we teach at each grade level to address the needs of our students so that when they leave, they are digital uh, learners and digitally savvy for the future. Thank, thank you, and, 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 I'm, and I really appreciate, all, I mean, the work that's been done in the last couple of years is just amazing, and you perfectly described it, but um, it, it's truly amazing when you see the kids and what they're able to do. Mm. Um, you know, I, I didn't grow up in that environment, right? I had to learn it later in life. And um, they, they're just, you know, I've got a five-year-old grandson who he, he taught me a game on vacation and I'm still playing it, you know? <laughs> like, oh, thank you. But, I, you know, to them it's just second nature. It's part of breathing, so. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Barclay or Mrs. Broch? Oh, well, I just uh, uh, echo Mrs. Hinkson's comments. Very impressive. And, um, I especially love the part about the apple seedlings. Is that what they were called? That is, that's wonderful. Is there a plan to replicate that at, at the other schools? There is actually. This is our pilot, and then our goal is at the beginning of the school year. No, co no teacher wants a coach, so the coaches are going to go to the sites. They each have four, and they're going to train sets of students from every classroom so that they can be the experts for the school year. That's amazing, and I think that one to one for the students is just. I mean, that's tremendous. There's a lot of kids, I'm sure, that, that don't have those um, resources within their home. And so to be, for the district to be able to provide that, it's really a game changer. So yeah, great you. work. Thank you. Thank you. I will echo on the one-to-one -one because four years ago, or three and a half years ago, we were told this is never going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, spending some time with other districts in the past couple of weeks, we are rare. Not all of the districts are one-to-one. -one. I'm really mm -hmm. pleased we used some of our funds to do this because I heard a lot of stories of struggles that districts who, that haven't been able to accomplish this. Um, when we talk about learning loss, and we've talked about it so much, these programs we've implemented, 
spending some time in the classroom with Dr. McClay. You can see um, different students working on different things. Mm -hmm. Those That iReady program truly has caught some students up or at least highlighted mm -hmm. where they needed extra support. So I feel like that has been such a great resource to bring these uh, students to know because it's hard to know, right, when they come back, yeah. but to know exactly based on the testing where it's coming from. So I, I think it's great. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to see what else we can do in the next four years. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Schwartz, are you there? Do you, have, do you have any questions or anything you'd like to add? Going once? Maybe not. All right, well, I'll jump in. Great job. I think it, Apple would be proud of your presentation skills, and I think you get great information. I Thank appreciate you. all of it. I think if I'll add on the seedlings, when I was talking to Mr. Evans just about his communication and marketing department, I think as we work up and engage students um, to participate and provide not just support but leadership, I think it's a, a great opportunity. I, I have to admit, because I have elementary school kids, one thing that probably would be something to consider is getting the, either the kids or staff uh, to a point where there's support structures. I know there's videos that go out, but for parents to understand Seesaw and Canvas and all the things that come at us, yeah. um, it, it's, it can be overwhelming for us. And I'm sure that's along the way once teachers get comfortable and so on. But as a parent, um, I just kind of trust that it's working and that I'll figure it out, you know, when I right. talk to the teacher or whatever. But um, I, I will say for my kids, it's, a, it's also another way to get to know um, their personalities and things that you, they probably wouldn't share is when you watch what they're doing and when they're presenting. And we've been to sites where I know the kid that's showing, they're, they're showing his work and then you get to know he does voices and mm -hmm. is creative and funny and interesting yeah. through using the software and the technology, which I think is the intent. So great yeah. presentation and Thanks. I know it's a commitment that we're wanting to push forward yeah. dramatically over the next few years. And I appreciate that feedback. We will, we will look at opportunities to train parents as well because it, 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 learning is happening in the home and they want to support. And you know, we did some really good tutorials yeah. during virtual learning yep. to help them, but in this new environment so that they understand uh, how effective, just 15 minutes of iReady, that you're gonna guarantee progress for your student, that they'll commit to that. Yeah. Um, one other cool thing is we are doing Apple iPad camp for kids. It's voluntary, we do it under Courtenay's leadership, but the coaches will be there teaching as well. And we just sent out the flyer Friday and we already have 400 kids district-wide signed oh. up. Um, it's virtual, so it's, it's an easy thing for families to do. Uh, but we're looking for opportunities to help the students, the staff, and the family community. So Thanks thank so you. much, Mr. Dixon. Oh, wait, I had one more thing, Mr. Dixon, before you <laughs> go off. I know you, you spoke about um, budget and support. Um, so going forward, um, I, we don't even know what the future is going to bring, right? I mean, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, who even thought we'd have computers, right? Mm -hmm. and, and maybe one in a classroom or something about, about what we had. Um, so we don't even know what our needs are going to be yet. But um, we do know for, for sure that we're going to have refresh needs and, and some technology that, that um, we need to address. So have um, have. Have, have, do we have a number on that? I know I have probably asked the same question last time. Do we have a number associated with that? Um, uh, would we be wise like to? Like a total? Yeah. Like yeah a, actually, like we, a, yeah. Like a, I'm going to defer to the <laughs> okay. expert. Like a, like a um, it, it's almost like a new line in our budget, right? For Or, or a um, uh, assigned fund to continue to support technology um, going forward. So is we do have numbers budgeted in our multi-year projections just based on conversation after conversation that we've been having. It started with the students and the one-to-one -one devices, or it actually started with the teachers mm -hmm. and all the teacher refresh. Then it moved to the student one-to-one. -one. Now we've been recently talking about that the, um, the smart board replacement, is it the projector, is it the Apple TV? Those are the infrastructures that we've been talking about moving forward. Also the, the security component of it. All the pieces that we know about today have been built into the budget in an ongoing on, in an ongoing basis because one to one doesn't just mean 
one device in one kid's hand, but it's all the supports that go along with that. So I don't know the number off of the top of my head, but those numbers are built into our budget. Okay, and maybe when we hear about the budget, we could hear a little bit about what that plan is, because I mean, when you think about it, all of our devices are fairly new right now, right? And we really struggled with even putting a plan in place to up, update all of our teacher devices, right, to refresh them. And so when we're thinking about 27,000 devices, if we're one to one or whatever our current enrollment is, it's a lot of devices. And so at some point, we're gonna have to think about times change, there's new things. Um, some things become where we can't use them anymore because they don't support mm -hmm. things that we're doing. So, um, well, yeah. at our meeting today, we're actually retiring 7,000 Chromebooks this year. So not every device is new. And we have the infrastructure that we are doing 20% each year so that when the life cycle goes, we are still in a good place. So I'm excited about how they found the money to do it. But we have a plan, and it's uh, systematic so far. So we're optimistic. Great. Thank you. Thank good job, you. Mr. Dixon. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, moving right along. We'll go to the communication, marketing, branding, information department update with Mr. Evans. I think we need to add a few more titles there, uh, Mr. Skumowitz. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone, again. Um, my name is Jimmy Evans. I introduced myself earlier, so I'm gonna go into that, but I am here to present the communication department update. And I am excited, uh, not that uh, Mr. Dixon doesn't bring his own energy when he comes into the room, but um, I'm excited to, uh, at the possibilities kind of looking forward and what we've been working on and where we're moving forward uh, in our district. Is it not on? Oh, this one, sorry, because you don't want to lean me over the whole time? Okay. Can you hear me now? Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Go. All right. Now I can stand up straight. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So uh, just want to thank you uh, for having me here, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I wanted to uh, go over, which is hopefully it's on. There we go. All right. Um, if you haven't been following, we've been posting a lot of our um, uh, different stories and stuff that are going through social media have been posted on our social media accounts. Uh, as we've been doing that, we've been uh, focusing on things like uh, events at schools, things that were going on, but really the overall point of trying to discuss the things that we're doing this, this evening is to really start telling our own narrative. As a district, we want to make sure that we control that narrative and that we are pushing out all the positive things we've done. I think that in the past, we've um, lacked in trying to get out those positive stories and things that we're doing as a district. So one of my primary goals in coming into this position was making sure that we tell everyone and show everyone what we're doing and how amazing that our district is. Um, we've first started with some things like our staff and community connections. If you haven't seen them, they're going out to our families, going out to our staff. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to implement as I've come on to the position was to add more video and less text. Uh, we know that people's time are precious, especially many of us who have kids and who are running from sporting event and academics and so forth. So we're really trying to bring that down so we can value people's time and do things in video form and do things that are a little bit more interactive and also less in terms of the, uh, the volume that you would see. So a lot of the things that we're implementing um, now would be to do that and also to shout out, if you've seen some of our school spotlights, I think they've done amazing. If you didn't see day middle schools this week, uh, it was awesome. Um, they're using all kinds of cool footage. But it, once again, it gives us the opportunity to tell our own story. So when we give that, uh, that, that ability to do that at the sites, it allows them to build that pride in what they do, whether it's a middle school, high school, or an elementary. So we're excited about the new changes and stuff that we've been doing within our staff and community connection. These are our four formats that we've been using in terms of our social media. We have our Instagram, our Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, one of the things that we're trying to implement is regular uh, postings on all of them because as you know in social media, you get that regularity of posting is really what keeps your numbers up and keeps people looking and watching. But also you don't want to overdo it, so you want to have a consistent role. So our goal would be somewhere between two to four postings a week to keep people engaged and not to overdo it um, with some of the things that are going on um, with in our district. So these would be the four formats that we're really pushing those um, communications through. 
Um, school logos, which we talked about a little bit earlier tonight. One of the things I wanted to uh, highlight here is that um, a logo in your, in your head when you're thinking a school logo, it has shifted over the past three years. It's not just a singular one JPEG image or uh, image that you can have. It's really shifted to a branding guide. And as you can see with our Home Instead um, logos there, that sometimes you need a certain type of image if you're going to do a t-shirt logo, if you're going to have a color print, if you're going to do an embroidery. There's lots of things that go into a logo. Um, and one of the things I'm going to show you next is that going again, once again, with our use of video and really being dynamic in our media, we also want to utilize more than just a logo. So let me give you a little, little uh, taste of what that looks like. little fun with Papa Valley right there. Uh, but once again, the whole point of showing you guys this is making sure that you see that it's more. It's more than just a logo. It's more than just a graphic artist drawing something and putting it to a graphic. It's animation. It's audio. It's, it's the visuals. In, in today's world, we're looking at um, what's engaging students. And if you're looking at what's on TikTok and Instagram and all of these formats, it is that multimedia that is really the dynamic piece. So not only do you want to have that, but also parents that are now are growing up through the system that are regular and experiencing these type of uh, media productions that uh, we want to make sure to, to, to tag into all of that with all of our families. So in terms of visioning and branding, we talked about it at the, at the school site level, and uh, Mrs. Hinkson alluded to earlier about, well, what are we doing as a district? So I kind of wanted to give you guys the update of what we're doing as a, as a district, and then where we're moving forward uh, um, with that. So um, we started with a, a company called Creative Bar. Many of you guys have worked with them at the start of the school year. We had some surveys that went out to multiple stakeholders, parents, families, uh, students, staff, uh, and board members. It, it was really a all-encompassing survey to find out what do we really want to be as a district. So when it comes to branding, you have to kind of set a big net first. And what they did was is they got us all kinds of, Creative Bar helped get us a lot of information on what our most important things are. Now this is a Wordle, and so uh, in education we see these often, but let me explain it if you don't know. A Wordle is a way of taking data and points that are being responded to, and then the size of the lettering and of the words get bigger as they have more responses that fill in the gap. So as you can see, based on the results, you see a lot of uh, people responding to some of those surveys and wanting quality education and relationships in our organization, uh, you know, families being involved, opportunities. We want to make sure they have that academic success and high quality teachers. So these are lots of things that involve. But within this, we wanted to take that and say, okay, well, how can we pare that down? This is a lot. So how do we pare it down into something that we can communicate with our staff, we can communicate with our families? And so from there, um, Creative Bar gave us some must-have brand checklists. And what they did was they um, looked at archetypes and looked at ways to kind of take those, those uh, the surveys and things and kind of put it down even more so. And one of the first ones they talked about is being a citizen. Um, and a couple things I want to highlight to you in this is that the, the deeply instilled sense of personal integrity, fairness, equ equ equity, responsibility, and then the biggest piece is the C value in collective and strength in partnerships. I think that we've lived in COVID in isolation, and I think that what people are um, really looking at now is how do we bring that back together? How do we be cohesive? How can we work with our parents? How can we work with our um, students, our staff, everyone that's involved to really do what's best for our students here um, within TVUSD? So that's kind of the citizen piece. The mentor piece is um, we're, we're here to partner with um, higher education. We want to make sure that we set high goals. We want to establish uh, that dynamic of making sure that we're working with families uh, in terms of a mentor type personality, as well as the next bullet point you see there is a pioneer. We pioneered lots of things, as you saw in Mr. Dixon's presentation, in terms of we were a front runner in a lot of the technology. We were a front runner in a lot of our instructional practice. So we want to make sure that's still a part of who we are. 
Um, the last uh, bullet point up there is a caregiver, and I think this encompasses everything. And it really comes back to that co commitment to nurture minds and hearts of students. And whatever we do, we have to have that heart behind it. So we're going to our branding and branding guide. Uh, all the pieces are kind of those uh, steps that we take, but we have to do it with that, uh, the mind and our heart in the right place as the caregiver in terms of the archetype. And these are all things that, like once again, we uh, got back from Creative Bar. Now, moving forward, once I came on into my position, we were looking at, well, how does that all tie together? So how are we going to put that together in something that's tangible, that we can relate, share with our community? And one of the things that um, I decided to do, um, which was to really look at the ability to start those conversations with our staff. So being that I had all that information, it was just, it was just words on a page. And I wanted to create a story. And what was going to be our story? And so I visited 20, I actually think at 21, TVUSD schools, um, where I kind of set up informal uh, conversations. And I asked staff questions and staff uh, of any staff that would come and talk to me um, that would come in and basically asking them, how do we want students and staff to feel when they walk on our campus? And another big question was, what are two or three words that really look at what we want to be about as a district? And so we really were engaging on where does the future uh, lie and where do people perceive us moving to in the future from our organization? So after having some amazing conversations, and I'm just going to take time to tell you now, our staff is so dynamic, so uh, amazing that they came up with ideas I would have never thought of. I've had, I, they, I, I got to know a lot of our staff that I hadn't worked with in the past, and they came up with amazing ideas, really, um, you know, really rich conversation, and it just makes me uh, really happy and I think proud of our district and how much amazing is out there. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there that I just love the conversations that were had, but really we wanted to talk with them, get their input and all of that, but have that face-to-face -face conversation. I think that was so valuable to meet all of our, our staff members and really look at them face-to-face -face and ask them what were they thinking, where would they see us moving. And so the result of some of these conversations, I took notes at every single site I've been to, and I'm going through all of them. So even though I didn't get to them by this meeting, I will be at every single site in our district. But um, as we're going through, uh, once again, going back to the Wordle, these kind of pared it down even more. So we had what was created from Creative Bar. Now we're looking at connections, relationships, innovation, and growth. So this was kind of what we got to with that. So now that we've had information from our staff, we've had the information from Creative Bar, we also wanted to keep moving forward. So here's a little video um, that I made and kind of going to bringing our vision to that, to that concentrated point, that point of where we're going to look at something. Um, hopefully this uh, gives you a little more uh, information on that and gives you a little perspective. What is our vision in TVUSD? Jaime Escalante once said, Life is not about how many times you fall down. It's about how many times you get back up. The last couple of years have been full of obstacles. What will we do now? We will create a new path forward. We will inspire the people around us. Gain a new perspective. Rise in the face of adversity. We elevate. We elevate opportunities. We elevate experiences. We elevate each other. So with that, once again, telling a story or saying that we have a vision to move forward, it's not always said in a word or two. If you see it in the visual, in the audio, and what's going on, we're trying to capture that. And so everything that you see that's coming out of the communications department is really impactful in terms of how do you feel when you watch that? What does it say about our messaging? And it's really important to encapsulate all of that. Um, with this uh, a video, you see that, uh, that one of the outcomes was we elevate. So in the conversations, in the surveys, everything that we took together, there were lots of commonalities and things that people valued. And one was that, number one, the factor of we. 
we, it has to be a collective, uh, uh, cohesive group between students, parents, teachers, support staff, community. It has to be all of us coming together to do what's right with our students here at TVUSD. And I think that it's so important to make sure that that's a part of who we are and our vision. So I think the first step was we. And the second word you see there is elevate. Um, and when you think of elevate, there's lots of ways you can go with it. But really what comes to mind for me is elevate is in growth, in innovation, in positivity, in the rigor at which we design, in the quality education. I'm a former science teacher, and the word elevate, you can elevate from every level. So what's really interesting to me is that I put these two balloons there just to remind me to say that the balloons, uh, we have all of these students, and Mr. Dixon alluded to it, to it earlier, but we have students at all these different levels. So no matter where the level is of that student, whether they're a grade level ahead or maybe a couple levels behind in terms of their reading, we want to elevate all students. We want to make sure that our top elite students can go to the highest reaches of the goals they want to achieve. And if there are students that want to take different ways, different options, CTE pathways, different things like that, we want to elevate those opportunities as well. So I think that the word elevate can be uh, generalized across our whole organization. It also can be uh, related to our ability to focus on that personalized learning and really meeting the needs of each and every one of our students in our district. In the video you also saw, uh, we elevate opportunities, experiences, and each other. Uh, one of the things that I had uh, outlined here was that uh, opportunities is that we know that students have different goals. We know that students are, are in different pathways. We want to make sure that we provide a variety of opportunities for our students and that they, they can reach those career aspirations. So whatever they are, we want to make sure that we give them the tools, that we are a way to help them reach those goals. So the opportunities have to be a part of what we do as an organization. Experiences, uh, the TVUSD experience is not only quality education, but it's also the experience outside the classroom environment. You guys know so many, what, much of what we do ties into sports, VAPA, clubs, community events. So when we elevate experience, it's not just the academic piece. It's also the exterior pieces that make that whole student be successful across the, across the board. And what's gonna have them do well in interviews and things like that is gonna be how do you generate that experience within our organization. Um, and then the third piece is each other. The collective partnership with students, parents, and employees throughout the district to help elevate our students. And really, once again, I've hit on this multiple times tonight, but I'm gonna keep saying it, it's all about us coming together and making sure we're working with our families, stakeholders, community, and as we all move in the common direction. So I think that goes back to the three components of kind of what that we elevate encompasses. And last, but uh, not least, um, we're looking at some new um, logos for the district. Uh, we've told, I told you earlier how important it is about how you feel about what we do as an organization. And um, our logos in the past haven't shouted out innovation, hasn't shouted out um, dynamics. Um, but uh, we have two options for logos here uh, uh, for uh, looking at kind of moving forward. But once again, going with a vision of We Elevate, looking at the ties with the, uh, the hot air balloon and Temecula, which is identify in our region. Um, all of these components kind of fit nicely together with the idea of having uh, one of the primary components of our logo being the hot air balloon. Um, so with that, um, we have uh, two options that we'd love for your input on. Um, I'm going to tell you straight up that I have a, uh, a love for logo number one, so that is my personal preference. Uh, but I will, uh, I will absolutely hear any of your input, but I, I, like, I like logo one. Just, just going to put it out there for you. <laughs> Not to persuade you anyway, but that's, that's my, my uh, two cents. Uh, and then with this, um, I want to give you a little bit of next steps. I know that Mr. Skumowitz had alluded to some of the ideas I had here. Um, in I want to utilize drone footage, as we saw in our facilities meetings and those videos that were made. It's so dynamic in that visual aspect of flying over an event or over a school. So use of drone footage, and we're looking to partner with high school programs, ROTC, things that we have current, currently going on. Um, uh, I just think that it's so cool, the technology piece, and also the visuals that you can get. So I love to work forward and move forward with some of those drone programs. Um, another idea that we're working on right now is a where are they now. We're really 
building those citizens within our, our community. And so right now, we want to make sure that we have all of these students that are doing amazing, successful things in the community and in the world that we shout those out. Because one of our biggest things that we have, one again, once again, not done very well is really put out all the amazing things we do. And what the amazing things we do is create and help build those students within our organization that end up being really huge successes in the future. So one of my kind of ideas would be to have even a former teacher interview a student that is successful in one area or another. I'm hoping to be the first one, um, you know, maybe it does one of my former students within the district that I can bring back in and shout out that because it not only does it feed what we do as an organization, but it is, it, if you are a teacher, if you've ever been part of education, that's what drives you. Show me a student that is successful and that's what's gonna drive me to motivate and go to the extra mile to do well. And the last but not least is the student media teams. Uh, we have student ambassadors, we have lots of different things, but really it's giving the ownership of the students and not just having them as a piece to come alongside, but give them the work to do. So I would love to have uh, some of our junior high, high school students say, please send me some footage, please send me some uh, ideas, things that were going on. I think that this keeps it relevant for them and also keeps us pushing forward innovation because those student media teams is dynamic and being that I'm a uh, department of one, <laughs> I need the help. So having those students help me is, is, would be amazing uh, in terms of what they're able to, like, you know, just having, we have three high school uh, graduations coming up. I can't be at three places at once. So having teams and people that, especially with our student teams within CTE and different things like that that can help me out is a big, uh, a big excitement for me to be able to work with some of those students. So. And then that's it for tonight. And once again, I would love to have the, the board's input on uh, not only the We Elevate idea, but also uh, any input on, um, on the logos. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no All right, who wants to talk first? Mrs. Hinkson, your green light's on. <laughs> No? Mrs. Broch, go. So Jimmy, I think that for the past two years, you just took everything that we've been saying and you just gave it right back to us. I really like, just hit me in the heart. <laughs> I'm super excited, logo number one. Um, <laughs> because really when I saw it, 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 it I drew, drew right to it. And I think it's great, I think it's fresh. I'm excited, I want it to be so fast because we've been waiting for this. And uh, I'm excited so thank you and i'll see you at chapter Oaks graduation absolutely I, I might be there for 15 minutes but i'm going to see how fast i can get across town um yes also logo number one <laughs> uh, uh, not, not to not to um hurt the feelings of logo number two but it kind of looks like a y <laughs> so i'm 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 number one with you um yeah i mean Again, I, I wasn't here for the past four years, but um, as a parent in the district, it's really great to see um, just kind of um, elevating our communications um, and getting those messages out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But I hope it'll also be a TV's graduation, right? Yeah, I'll make it all three somehow. No, I don't know, okay. but I'll be there. <laughs> um, but I am curious about um, do you... I mean, do you foresee in the future kind of creating like a media schedule, um, kind of what kinds of things will be highlighted throughout the year? How do you foresee that kind of long-term planning going in your Department of One? Well, one of the things we're gonna do as we transition next year, because I didn't get to start this year, we're gonna look at a lots of different components of things that we can schedule out through the year. One of the things that comes to mind right away is we've had different appreciation uh, videos and things for different departments and we kind of tied that in staff appreciation one of the things that we'll go out next year is want to make sure that we identify all the days for our bus drivers for our you know for our IAs for our teachers we want to identify all of those days up front and make sure that we give the proper recognition for those um, teachers and, and employees across all levels of our organization because we really want to make sure that they feel that value because once again it goes to how you feel and when our people feel supported um, it's gonna really drive our vision and drive our mission so I think that it's going to be absolutely a lot of planning to go it out. And like I told you, we want to make sure that we're very strategic in how we do utilize social media and having those things, which is really pushing out our positive narrative, all the amazing things that we do, and that we don't inundate it as well. There's a balance um, in terms of use, utilizing that with social media. Right, agreed. Um, are there plans for the website? 
Yes, there are. I didn't tie that in, but um, one of the things that is going to help us move forward with our website is once we decide on, you know, logo and everything else moving forward. As, as of this point, we're not transitioning away from Blackboard, but we'd love to use a different template. So we're going to not overhaul the whole website, but it should look very different and obviously uh, help with navigation. One of the main points of uh, moving forward as well this summer would be to look at points of navigation and limiting the amount of clicks and where you can get to locations and also looking at the volume because you can get uh, data on who how many clicks you have at what locations in the website and really bring those easier to the front and so as well as looking at some even you see some different colors than you've seen in the past in our district utilizing some of those uh, colors in our new website as well yeah, awesome. yeah I mean as like I said a parent in the district I you know traditionally just found a website a little bit cumbersome so less clicks sounds amazing <laughs> <laughs> we're thank working you. on it yeah thank you it, it's just amazing because we've been talking about this for what five, four years it, right um, it's fresh it's clean it's exciting it's what we've been asking for um, it sends a message of all the exciting things going on in our district um, how amazing we are right and <laughs> we just are because we have amazing teachers amazing staff amazing students and um, for our community to be able to see that is is really cool i love um some of the first some of the next steps that were in there i i, I wanted to share a quick story but i love the where are are they now it would be really cool if we could put something out like to the alumni to people who have been had, had attended our schools and see really what they are doing because um you know i've been here for almost well for 30 years now and we we run into past students and families um and, and I'm always amazed at what, what, where they are and what they're doing. So I'd I, I mean, I'd just love to hear some of those stories, right? And um, the student media teams, absolutely. Our kids are so capable. They can put out amazing products. But the one story I wanted to share, and this kind of goes back to Mr. Dixon's presentation too, we're talking about how times have changed. So 20 years ago, before drones, um, I have my pilot's license and I did the flyovers of schools. <laughs> and I remember flying school to school and doing those wing down and turn around the school and the people with me uh, getting a little sick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of the photos you see at some of the schools were taken, I had, a, I had somebody from the media with me, right? <laughs> Taking photos, I flew over for dare days or, or red ribbon days and, and schools would stand out there in the formation spelling out um, uh, I don't know, dare, not dare, but what they spell out, red ribbon or something, I don't know, whatever they spelled out, you know, all the kids were out there dressed up and, and on the fields. And by the time you fly over one school, circle, next school, I mean, they're not that far apart, right? So yeah, some of my passengers were getting a little uh, sick. But, <laughs> <laughs> but now there's drones, see? No more reason for flyovers. But anyway, just that was... a. Uh, brought back memories for me. But um, yeah, just really exciting stuff. So nice to be able to uh, see and hear about all this. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Schwartz, would you like to? OK. He says, great job. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Thanks, Mr. Schwartz. Okay, so my turn. My enthusiasm for this one is genuine, and I, <laughs> you did a great job, but like Mrs. Broch said, we've talked about this kind of obsessively, and it's kind of nice to have both information reports paired together, because it's this future ready, and all this technology, and all these things that we keep talking about, you know, 21st century, this and that, and we're 22 years into the century, and we're getting there, right? Um, <laughs> but I, I really, um, I think it, it's great and it's, it's, it's exciting. And when you talk about budget and how we can make our um, 
our district uh, function and thrive. It starts with recruiting and retaining not only our teachers, but getting more students that have um, options, mm -hmm. right, to go to other schools to want to be here. And the only way we can do that is to communicate what's happening um, and to promote and to let them know, you know, everything um, that we can. Um, I'd like to see Logo 3, because I think you, <laughs> you you chose Logo 2 to make sure we would do Logo 1. But um, I, I think I, I, I'm excited. I, I hope that as part of the growth, um, kind of as you finish these first few months and get to the summer, um, you can take a step back, kind of you've been drinking from the fire hose, <laughs> um, of being able to say this is what I need for next year and how we support that. Um, I also want to give you a shout out because you went out on a limb to <laughs> bring you in to do this. Um, uh, it was a little bit of a different, different way of getting someone into this role. And um, I think we can all say we're excited about it and kudos to you and, and you're doing a great job and we just want to keep the, the ball rolling as, as fast and as big as possible. So great job. Thank awesome. You. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Break, ready to go. Okay, time to listen to me read. All right, I call for a motion, moving on to action items. I call for a motion and a second to approve the continuance of resolution 2021 22 36, recognizing a state of emergency and authorizing teleconference meetings pursuant to AB 361. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson, Second. seconded by Mr. Schwartz. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion adopted 5 0. Call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-55, California Day of the Teacher is Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson, seconded by Mr. Schwartz. Can you read that? Is it wrong? Um, yeah. I always like to hear how. Okay. Let me pull it up real quick. <clears throat> I got it. Okay, uh, California Day of the Teacher, Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Whereas California Education Code section 37, oh no, 37222 sets aside the second Wednesday in May as the Day of the Teacher and, and encourages suitable commemorative exercises directing attention to teachers in the teaching profession. Whereas the Temecula Valley Unified School District has the utmost respect and admiration for the state's professional teachers, individuals who have dedicated their lives and their talents to the education of our children. California's most precious and important resource. Whereas the Temecula Valley Unified School District acknowledges the limitless and lasting ways in which outstanding teachers contribute to their students' lives. Whereas the Temecula Valley Unified School District recognizes that the quality of all students' educational experiences depends significantly and vitally upon the quality of their teachers. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Temecula Valley Unified School District Board of Trustee, Trustees hereby proclaim May 11th, 2022, as California Day of the Teacher, extending its sincere appreciation of the professional teachers in the district and urges everyone to reach out to a teacher and thank them for their, for their contributions and who, in the immortal words of Henry Brooke Adams, do indeed affect eter eternity. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is adopted 5-0. Item number three, I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-56, Classified School Employee Week, May 15th through 21st, 2022. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Give me a second. Same request. I knew it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Whereas many classified employees, perhaps the largest share, serve in paraprofessional cap capacities, most providing direct assistance to certify, cer excuse me, to certificated faculty in the classroom and giving students the type of individual attention and support they need to succeed academically. Whereas other classified employees perform vital clerical and office support functions without which our school sites, as well as the district office, simply could not operate and without which many students would not receive important educational and health related services. Whereas still other classified employees are involved with caf cafeteria and other nutrition related programs, serving our students many thousands of meals and snacks each year, which enable those students then to focus their attentions on learning, not on hunger pains. 
Whereas yet another large group of classified employees provide school transportation services, skillfully moving thousands of our students each day from home to school and to school related activities and compiling unparalleled pu public transportation safety records. Whereas many classified employees perform custodial and other operational services ensuring that school buildings and grounds district wide are clean, safe and well maintained and that thus the public's substantial investment in these facilities is protected. Now therefore be it resolved that the Temecula Valley Unified School District Board of Trustees declare May 15th through 21st, 2022 as classified employees week in recognition of the many outstanding contributions and services provided by this district's classified employees and the board urges all school sites and district departments to thank classified employees and emphasize their contributions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries 5-0. Number four, I call for a motion and a second to approve the changes to board policy and administrative regulation 3512.5, unmanned aircraft system drone use. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Barclay, seconded by Mr. Schwartz. Anyone have any questions on this? Didn't we look at this like a couple years ago? Is there additional changes or is there, there are? There are changes and Mr. Vickery is probably best suited to briefly describe for you what those are. Okay. I tried to read through it. There was a lot of red on it and I'm like, I don't know how much that's different from the last time we looked at this. And I know a lot of it has to do with the airport being nearby and such too, correct? So essentially, um, as the years have gone by, the use of the drones program and Commander Lopper's here from Chaparral who runs the ROTC program, the use of the drones is so much more uh, on a regular basis than it was back then. Um, so in order to make it and streamline it for those ROTC programs and anybody else using the drones, it was time to change our policy to be more in lines with what the FAA now requires. Um, I know that their program that they're doing there, they're flying a couple times a week um, and all the programs are. So we, uh, we had to streamline it and we work together with uh, other people that know more about it than I do, that's for sure. So. And uh, Jimmy's going to have to get through me to get his drone, too, so. <laughs> was, did we was use the CSBA recommended language, or did we kind of um, enhance so it a bit? I believe, and Mr. Vickery is, is definitely more versed in this. Uh, my understanding is that the FAA and our local airports have changed and no longer want us contacting them each time we utilize and whatnot. So when he says we've streamlined, that wasn't necessarily to make it easier on us. It was to adhere to what the authorities are asking of us, is that correct? It, it both, uh, it would be, we, we don't wanna do things that the FAA doesn't even want us to do. They don't even want us contacting the airports anymore. Uh, all of our schools are in uh, uncontrolled airspace, so there's, there's no need for some of those. Uh... Okay, great, any other questions? A motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's adopted 5 0. I call for a motion and a second to approve and file an affidavit for request for allowance of attendance because of emergency conditions. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Mrs. Lash, were you going to go through this one real quick? Sure, this is for um, a day where we had um, extra high absenteeism due to a social media threat. Um, and so whenever the absence rate is more than 10% greater than what it was in a normal given year, we can file for a waiver with the state. We haven't had any be denied yet. So part of that process is to um, have the board approve the request. Thank you for that. Any follow-up questions? Motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. I call for a motion and a second to approve an increase to the maximum administrative fee amount on reimbursements to align with the escalation and developer fees. Moved. And moved by Mrs. Barclay. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. Any questions on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0.
<clears throat> I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-48 and approve the school facilities mitigation agreement and the deposit agreement each between the district and Woodside 05 SLP. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hingson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Any questions on this? Is this why Janet's here? <laughs> no? <laughs> oh, okay. She has okay. a bunch. Any questions? I don't have any questions okay. on that. No. Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-49 and state the intention of the district to establish community facilities district number 2022-1 and to authorize the levy of special taxes subject to the approval of the qualified electors of community facilities district number 2022-1. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Questions, comments? Mm, refresh my memory. I know I read it, read through this one. And so item, item seven through 10 are to establish a CFD. Um, so seven that you just approved right. was to create the CFD. This one is to um, is state the intent of the district to establish the CFD and authorize the levying of taxes. Nine is the intent for the bonded indebtedness. Should we issue uh, CFD bonds? And then the last one would be to um, approve and order the recording of the boundary map for the proposed CFD. So this new CFD is in the summer, Summers Bend, um, new housing development. So we're on item nine, correct? Correct. Okay. No, it's, we're on eight. Oh, we're on eight. She Why just, did I? Okay. She gotcha. mentioned item nine. No, I, uh, yeah, can you read the item number when you read your motions? Thank you. I was, I thought we were on item nine. That's, that's the one I was questioning, so, sorry. Okay, we have a motion on the floor for item number eight. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Item number nine. I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-50 and state the intention of the district to incur bonded indebtedness for CFD number 2022-1 <coughs> up to an aggregate principal amount of $18 million subject to the approval of the qualified electors of the CFD. I need a motion. Moved. Moved by, sorry, Mrs. Barclay. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. So you had a question on this uh, one? Yeah, I do. So can you explain the 18 million? Where, the, where how, the, how does that come into play? That's an estimate, and I know Mrs. Dixon is here if she wants to answer as well, but that is an estimate of what the total amount of indebtedness based on the uh, um, assessed values of that CFD and the given rates that, right? That's where the 18 million comes from? So that's what we're estimating the CFD collections to be for. That's the bonded indebtedness allowable right. for those CFDs. So it's not it's not the collections. Okay. Yeah. That would be the maximum amount that um, we could issue bond amount for. So it includes the. It is an estimate, but it's also high because we don't know exactly what year we're going to to issue them and there is an escalation clause in there. And so that would be the, the cap. We rarely issue the total amount that that gets to, but we wanna make sure that we've got enough room in there. Okay, yeah. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Item number 10, I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-51 and approve and order the recording of a boundary map of proposed community facilities district number 2022-1. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Any questions on this one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion adopted 5-0. 
I call for a motion and a second to approve resolution number 2021-22 slash 53, lease, lease back services for the construction of phase two K6 site and issuance, not yet please, an issuance of the request for proposals by district staff. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. So I know we did this at Vale Elementary as well, right? So, but can you explain? Um, I know we, we said at the beginning when we were talking about this that we would have some discussion on it. So if you can explain what that will look like at that site. Sure, so no, normally we don't go about construction by doing lease leasebacks. Um, we normally hire the contractors ourselves to do the work and then we oversee the project. In, um, in this case for the TK8 site, um, time is an issue to make sure that we are ready to open by August of 2023. So we are proposing to lease the land um, and we, to a developer contract and that developer contract is then responsible for construction of the facility and um, they develop and construct the project. The district would still be um, in charge of selecting and approving the plan, so we're not relinquishing that responsibility to them, but we are uh, relinqu relinquishing the selection of the construction uh, vendors and overseeing of the project. While um, we might pay a little bit more in the end, that's um, how we're going to get it done by August of 2023. And there is a maximum guarantee price when we issue that lease lease back. So it's not like we write them a blank check and say, tell us how much it costs. There is a maximum amount um, for the project once we know what that project looks like. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion adopted 5-0. Item number 12, I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-54, authorizing contracting pursuant to bid number 21-22-001, just in time classroom and office supplies. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Any questions on this item? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion adopted 5-0. Item number 13. I call for a motion and a second to approve the revised job description, Assistant Director, Special Education. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Any questions on this job description revision? No? Motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Item number 14, I call for a motion and a second to approve the TVEA, TVUSD, MOU, Retiree Medical Bridge 415-2022. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Any question on the retiree it's just extending bridge? the date, correct, that to, to request? Yes, it opens the window back up, I believe, from April 18th to May 2nd, and I believe we had two um, people engaged. Okay, thank you. Motion on the floor, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Item number 15, I call for a motion and a second to approve the tentative agreement 2021-2022 between Temecula Valley Unified School District and the California School Employees Association and its chapter 538 effective July 1st, 2022. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. Can, can you explain the, the reason for the change in the number of days? Hopefully this will answer your question, Mrs. Hinkson. I have a statement from Mr. Arce, who couldn't okay. be here this evening. He said, uh, this is an agreement between CSEA and the district to make changes to the 21-22 collective bargaining agreement to reflect the new classified probationary period, which went into effect January 20th, making the probationary period six months. This tentative agreement makes changes to Article 8 and Article 16 um, reflective of those requirements. So does that answer your question? I believe did it went from 12 months to six. Yeah, did you say state. it already went into effect in January? January of 2020. 
is what this says. Was it an MOU, so it wasn't part of the regular language? Mrs. Lashtino. I believe it's January of 2020 or when your current CBA expires, whichever is later. Oh. And so that's why um, it's based on the C CBA expiration date. Okay, thank you. Motion on the floor, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. I know Mr. Arce is not here. Do we have someone doing the negotiations update? Very brief. Okay. <laughs> okay, so in terms of negotiations update for CSEA, the next session will take place on Thursday, May 26th. And for TVA, uh, two things going on next week. On Monday, TVA and the district are convening three different subcommittees to look at salary schedules for CTE, SLP, those are speech and language pathologists, and the social workers. And then the next full negotiation session is slated for Friday, May 20th. Great, thank you. Uh, moving on to board comments. Uh, J Steve, we're gonna start with you since you're dialing in, if you're ready, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, yeah, uh, you mentioned something going to, uh, to the board about the board meeting that we Thanks, Mr. Schwartz. Mrs. Hinkson? No, I'll, I'll keep it real brief, just acknowledging again uh, Day of the Teacher, Classified Employee Week, that um, we couldn't do it without all our wonderful employees and the, the difference that they make and the hard work that's gone on. It feels really good at this point to um, be back to kind of normal meetings. I know I said that last time. Um, uh, this meeting was uh, really uplifting from the standpoint of right from the beginning, the students that came in, uh, high school students that did their spotlights, um, uh, even Mr. Kingsburg, right? <laughs> Wake you up there. <laughs> Just, and, and the presentations we had and um, the, you know, and the, um, the the wonderful things that are going on and, and, um, and, and just moving forward with, with all of the work. So that's, that's exciting. Um, one thing I wanted to comment and I didn't pull it, I was going to pull it and Mr. Kingsburg commented on it was personnel um, item list where we had 36 teachers. Um, I know we talked about that throughout the year uh, a few times about the importance of giving people that feeling that their job it, it has you know, we value them and want to make sure that we give them that feeling of um, security um, rather than the temporary position that they don't know if it's going to be renewed and they continue to be, you know, uh, unsure year to year. Um, it's even more important, too, um, from the standpoint that it, uh, uh, retaining our teachers and how difficult it is to hire teachers at this point in time, the, the shortage in the state. So um, I was really happy to see that when I saw 36 teachers being, um, having their contracts converted from temporary um, to probationary um, uh, contracts this time. So that was, that was really nice to see. Um, just really enjoyed all the, the presentations today and um, looking forward to, I have the delegates assembly coming up uh, in a couple weeks. So I'll be gone for that, for the weekend for that up to Sacramento and I'll be happy to share um, when I get back, and I'm looking forward to hear what, hearing what Mrs. Broch has to say about Washington, D.C. and her visit there. Mrs. Barclay? Thank you. Well, hopefully I don't need my glasses because I just threw them on the floor. Um, uh, I was able to attend the Crystal Apple Awards, which was really a great um a great event, so nice to see so many wonderful teachers being honored in the district and the students presenting their nominations. It was, it was really a, a wonderful event. Um, it was great to see all the recognitions here tonight. Um, I, 
have not had a chance to get out into the district as much as my colleagues here, so it's, it's great to have people here so I can um, get a, a better understanding of what's happening in the district and all the wonderful um, people and things that are, that are going on. Um, I was able to attend Empty Bowls uh, fundraiser over at um, Temecula Valley High School, which was very fun. Um, my daughter participated in that years ago as a ceramic student, so it was great to go back again. And, and they had students performing um, during the time when we were eating, and they were really talented. It was very, very impressive. Um, it was great to see the ASB kids tonight and just to hear how much fun is happening right now. Their proms and the sports and all, all the great things and it's just great to see the kids um, back together with their friends and just, you know, really having those experiences, the ones that they're really going to remember. Um, and of course, I can't end the night without talking about the stunt season, the, the most neglected sport in the district. <laughs> And thank you, Mr. Skumowitz, for attending two of the games. It was very wonderful. Um, and the Temecula Valley team did finish second in league, and they were amazing. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, a little, few more people will come out and see them again next year. Um, and thank you to um, Dr. McClay for her support <laughs> this last week. My father passed away and it's been really wonderful for everyone who has reached out to me. So I appreciate that. Sorry. Thank you. Mrs. Broch. Okay, Allison. Um, so mine's a little bit longer. I'll try to keep it brief. I won't go too much into detail and we can have more conversations if you'd like, because I feel like there's a lot to talk about Washington. Um, it's been a busy two weeks. I attended uh, Empty Bowls also with Allison and got to meet her lovely family, or part of them. Um, I presented at Dollars for Scholars with Mr. Skrinowitz, and that was amazing last night. Um, I was at a counseling advisory meeting at Chaparral High School, which is super impactful. They're doing amazing things over there. I did go to Washington, D.C. Um, some of the things that, uh, and thank you to Mrs. Lash, because she set me up for success. Um, it was my first time going, and I was there with other districts. And it was very interesting to see what we do versus what they do, and I'm very proud to be a part of Temecula. Um, some of the things that, that we brought up um, was to stop with the one-time funding, that we need ongoing funds. We have no idea what the future holds or what the learning loss is, so that one-time funds is not super helpful when we're doing the budget and we're not sure if we're implement implementing programs and hiring people to be in those programs if they're going to last. Um, then talked about the nutrition and the paperwork that's involved with that and how difficult it could be for our district, um, especially with some of the timelines. Um, equity funding for all schools with special ed. We are seriously underfunded here in Temecula. Um, also, uh, go, we dipped a little bit into testing um, at the federal and even talked about it at the state level. Um, and they are encouraging us. I had brought up in one of our meetings that we utilize iReady and those programs, why can't those be the assessments versus doing the big um, state or federal tests that we need to do that makes everybody kind of go crazy and the, our teachers and our staff um, and our students, it's all this pressure when we're doing these measurements. I get that not all districts do, but do it, but we do. So. Maybe those are things that they can implement in the future. Um, they told me to, that I should be using this as a flashlight, not a hammer. Um, so I don't know how well received that was, but I tried. Um, also, I was pretty impressed. We, as I mentioned earlier, we're a one-to-one. -one. Most of the districts that were there are not a one-to-one, -one, and most of them have connectivity issues for their students. Their students were n still not able to connect um, during home learning for COVID and kids that are still at home, they still don't have internet. So it, it's really something that I think that maybe even I took for granted. It, it was a really big deal what we were able to accomplish and I'm very proud of that. I did a site visit at Livornia in French Valley and although, yes, technology is something, I was so impressed at both schools. The printing was kind of incredible. Um, I, for first and second grade, also the reading that was going on in the first grade classrooms, they were reading to us uh, the stories that they did. 
and the friendship rooms, very cool. I love that there's a place for all students, maybe some that don't have a lot of friends or they're new or they just need to develop those skills. Um, seeing all those kids work cohesively together in that room was pretty cool. Um, and then next is I'm chaperoning grad night at Universal Studios with Chaparral. Um, I'm not invited to prom. My son said no, um, but I will be at his graduation and handing him his diploma. So Jimmy, can't wait to see you there. I'll be the one sobbing. Thank you. My kids are in bed, so let's just keep talking. So I'm not going to get there in time. Uh, I'll start with Mr. Kingsburg to give you some, some love. Um, since you've been playing second fiddle to the high school kids, you've been, I met you about four years ago, and you've been a consistent voice for the teachers. You've done a great job. I appreciate you. I know your teachers do. Um, retirement's a big thing, so congratulations from all of us. But if this is the last meeting, um, it was great. You did awesome. And I hope your retirement's great. And I bet you'll be coaching basketball within a few, pretty soon, pretty soon. So, but th thank you and, and uh, we appreciate everything you've done. Um, this has been kind of a crazy time of year. I know we've been rattling off all the stuff that we've done. I did go to, my, my biggest highlight without question was being convinced to go to Stunt Cheer twice because my daughter um, fell in love with it and now Allison is going to have me go to tryouts for some event for her to try and get on the team. But it was great. It was awesome to see the kids having an awesome time, especially in a sport I'd never heard of or been familiar with. So if there's a sport you want me to see, let's go see it. So thanks for bringing me out to that. Um, on top of it, we did site visits at um, Abbey Ranky and Crown Hill. Um, those are both inspiring, but like um, Mr. Dixon said, I think, giving teachers the summer break kind of to recover. We saw that. Um, also was in an EAI meeting, Crystal Apple, got to go to that. Um, that was a, a great night. Lots of teachers, got, got lots of love, and, and um, there were some amazing student stories um, for them. Dollars for Scholars last night, $175,000 plus went out to our, our students. It was, it was pretty impressive, I think. Um, Mrs. Broch and Dr. McClay and I kept looking at each other, um, kind of in amazement at the colleges and the accomplishments and the majors, neuro, biochemical, engineering, and all these amazing things that our kids are doing. Um, so that, that was amazing. Um, last thing, I would like to uh, request that um, Dr. McClay and Cabinet, just to throw one more thing on your, your plate, um, I think we need to have a conversation on uh, and an update on our board policy 5132. That's the one on dress and grooming. Looking back on that one, the last time it was reviewed and amended was back in 2018. And that's been something that we as board members have been fielding lots of questions about um, from staff, from parents. And I think um, from my perspective, I think we'd like to hear from your point of view, um, where our secondary administrators, what they're confronting. Um, what they're dealing with and maybe some some amendments that we can look at through the summer so that coming back to school they've got the direction and clarity to um, communicate to their families um, in a way that can create a safe positive professional learning environment um, so that would be my only add to already a full list of future agenda things to discuss um, and that's it for me so superintendent comments okay we are happy to do that, and we'll, we'll get that calendar. Uh, a lot of the things I was going to share tonight, I kind of made just kind of one of those what I did last summer kind of lists of everything going on. I think that the audience as well as the public who's watching and the board and cabinet got an incredible taste tonight of some of the awesome stuff at the end of the year. And, and there's a definite excitement in the air that I think is even more so than most years. And we're hearing even students say that they just they want to grab every opportunity. Um, and perhaps that's kind of a, a result of COVID and having lost opportunities in previous years. But you even heard, I believe, the TVHS students tonight who did the spotlight, the, the largest number of students they've ever had attend a prom in the history of TVHS was a little over 800. And you heard tonight their number from last week, and I think it was the weekend before uh, last, was over 1,200. So I think that just speaks to all of the things that are going on. 
all of the awards ceremonies, the athletic events, the end of the year activities. It's pretty crazy out there, but also pretty amazing. And I know that the board listed quite a few already, a few that we didn't hit thus far tonight. And it's perfect timing because it is obviously Day of the Teacher and Staff Appreciation Week uh, this past week. But we had a California State Teacher of the Year finalist who was honored last week up at Riverside County Office of Education. I'll be going to Sacramento uh, next week to honor her statewide, and that's Kristen Morales from Chaparral High School. Also, we have uh, a Riverside County Administrator of the Year in Donna Leone, and so she was recognized, as were six other employees throughout the district um, this past week at, uh, up in Riverside. And I think they just, they represent the amazing employees that we have, um, from the folks who pick up students at 6 a.m. to get them on a bus, all the way to our child care aides who are sending them home at 6 p.m. and everyone in between. We just have amazing people. Um, also speaking to not just staff and student excitement about activities, but I thought it was interesting to highlight. So the Home and Stid program, which you know is brand new this year, we set a target, kind of just grabbed a number out of the air of 300 this year, right? Well, we know that we hit, what was our highest number? 650-ish, just under 700 in terms of students. Well, they had a family event night last week, a Star Wars themed family event night, over 600 attendees. And then I've had several principals already tell me that they are setting record numbers for open house uh, events. Uh, today, just a principal said over 90% participation and families coming in to tour the school. So I think that just speaks to how excited everybody is to be back, to see the amazing things that are going on in our schools. And then two last things and I'll stop. We also received two awards last week, a brand new program through the California State Department of Education that's called the Pivotal Practice Award. And this replaces distinguished school awards, at least for this year coming out of the pandemic. Abby Ranke won one for their social emotional supports for kids and the district office won one. And I believe our author of the application, Mrs. Deus is sitting out there basically for all of the social and emotional supports that we did district-wide to support our students and families during the pandemic. So uh, those are two big kudos. And then I'll finish off with just the site visits last week. And we did two site visits today, which we typically don't do on a board meeting day. They were kind of accidentally scheduled on a board meeting day. But I have to say it was the absolute highlight. I called it the trifecta, the best instruction I probably have seen in my 30 year plus career the best social emotional supports for students from the time they arrive on campus to the time they go home and the best climate and culture. And so I will give a shout out tonight to the French Valley Flyers and the Livornia Lions because it was quite an amazing day on their campuses. So speaks to the work of all staff and um, kudos to everybody. All right, thank you for that. Future agenda items. Staff will present information on the following agenda items for the next regular board meeting on May 24, 2022, college and career readiness and the EL update. Some information on upcoming events for board members, May 9th, 7 p.m., we already did that. May 11th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., we have the Special Olympics Unified Track and Field at Mira de Mesa High School. May 19th, 5 to 7 p.m., we have the TVUSD Retirement Ceremony at TVH TVHS Golden Bear Theater. June 2nd is all the high school graduations. June 3rd is the middle school graduations and the SAC graduation. In accordance with government or education code, the board may meet in closed session to consider matters described in sec agenda section E. There's no reason for us to go back into closed. Uh, the next regular open uh, session business meeting of the governing board of education is scheduled for May 24th, 2022. This meeting is adjourned Tuesday, May 10th. 2022 at 8.49 p.m. Good night.